note that this content is for adults only. Viewer discretion advised. If you haven't yet, hit the subscribe, like and share. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode or live stream with me, Gisela K. This is Grizzly True Crime and today we continue to look at Crystal Rogers' case as well as her dad, Tommy Ballard, and perhaps even some cases that may be connected. We've looked at that before. If you missed the deep dive, which was the first live stream we did on this case, please check out my playlist that I've made for you. It's linked in the description box and I've put it in chronological order so you can just you could just play it from from the top okay if you missed that i would highly recommend it because as we go we are uh, looking at more and more you know so today what we're going to be doing is looking at brooks how because he was the main suspect since october of 2015 right we're going to be looking at his um interview with police with detective john snow as well as a couple of little other clips Sorry, i'm just resizing this while i talk to you guys as we all get ready and so we'll be looking at that, and of course now in hindsight it's very interesting because not only was he the main suspect all these years, but they finally obviously found something that got him arrested eight years later. Eight years later, two people arrested and charged. Joseph Lawson was charged with conspiracy to commit murder and tampering with evidence, and Brooks Houck charged with murder and tampering with evidence. Yes, of Crystal Rogers, and he's being held on a $10 million bond. He asked for it to be reduced. The judge said no. So if you don't know who Joseph Lawson is and who Brooks Houck is, I'd recommend checking out yesterday's live stream because you're going to learn a lot there too. We did a deep dive on who both of those are. So you should be prepared for today if you did see that. If not, don't worry. Just know that this was the last person who saw uh, Crystal Rogers and her boyfriend that she lived with, and she had a son with him. Okay, so <laughs> Sassy and Free says, John Snow, love that name, <laughs> right? Welcome everyone, welcome to all my moderators, thank you so much for everything you do, welcome to all my patrons and all my members as well. If you're only joining membership today, I hope you'll check out yesterday's members only live stream, it's on the community tab for you or on the members only playlist, that's where you'll find it. Uh, thank you so much everyone, uh, also someone sent a sticker earlier that I think I missed, sorry about that. Wait, let me get it. Tanya, there we go. Thought I saw something there. Tanya, thank you so much. Tanya Schippers for your, I guess in South Africa we say Schippers, right? Here in the Netherlands I say Schippers. Thank you so much for your 21 ZAR, really appreciate it. Okay, so what I've done here is I've compiled a lot of clips for you. <laughs> That's what I was waiting for. I'm like, sorry about that. Uh, give me two minutes because I'm just waiting to export this massive file I've made for you guys. <laughs> and so what it is, is this is the um, initial press conference and all of this is in context of Brooks Houck. It's all little clips along the way, things people said and things like that, as well as of course the interview that was uh, you know, at the police station on July 8th of 2015. Crystal Rogers was last seen on July 3rd of 2015. And if you saw the first episode, you're gonna know a lot of bullet points and details and we're uh, there's a lot of us that are visual learners over here so I tried to make it a visual learning experience you know so we could go over all of it and hopefully you'll remember some of those details because if you do then you'll realize a lot of the things that he says a lot of crap <laughs> right so just remember he is still innocent or proven guilty in a court of law he has been charged now though so that was massive massive news in this case after eight years okay are we ready everyone so let me move myself over like this. This should be good. I just quickly want to do this just to make sure it's full size for when there's other clips and things. Okay, wait, there we go. All right. <laughs> I'm just going to put myself here in a corner. Okay. Thank you for sharing orange hearts in the chat. Uh, to show support for Crystal's family and friends and all the locals. Thank you to all the locals who have been emailing me. I really appreciate all your emails so much. Uh, thank you so much for that. Okay, here we go. So let me play what I've made for you here. Began trying to reach, trace uh, Crystal's steps. 
And the uh, last person that we know that Crystal was with was uh, her boyfriend or a uh, common law husband. They have a child together. They live here in Bardstown. And uh, his name is Brooks Houck. And I want everyone to know that he has been completely cooperative with our investigation and has tried to assist us in any way that he can and has been helping us today as well as he did yesterday. And uh... So that was press conference number one on July 7th of 2015. And then a day later, Brooks Huck was interviewed at the police station. Uh, uh, we need everyone's help and everyone in the Ballard family and in the Brooks Houck family to come together to try and figure out where Crystal is at. Can you spell the boyfriend's last name? H-O-U-C-K. You're saying right now there's not a suspect in the person there, there is not a suspect. The only the, the you start with the people that are the closest, and it's terrible that uh, that we're at this point, and uh, you have to go back and retrace footsteps. And as far as we know right now, he was the last person that was with her. Sorry, I was mute. Um, as you guys know, when we follow cases, we often watch these press conferences and obviously that's what they say. We start with the person closest to them and Brooks Houck just so happened to be the last person to see Crystal Rogers and his story do not quite make any sense. So here at this point, you know, in 2015, right after she went missing, it's like, look, man, he's cooperating with us. He's doing everything he can, except he wasn't helping in the searches as we now know. Okay. So... <laughs> It's just interesting in hindsight now to go back and be like, damn, look at that press conference initially. And then in the end, yep, he was arrested. OK, so let's continue on. But that's simply what that means. He was the last person that was with her. And we do not need to be accusatory towards anyone. The two new photos show two vehicles that were driving or stationed around several investigation points. This first photo shows a red SUV and a white SUV driving down Loretto Road near my old Kentucky home campground. No time was given, though, on when it was taken. The second photo was taken July 4th, 2015 at around 3.45 a.m. That's one day after Crystal Rogers went missing and her car and belongings were found on the Bluegrass Parkway. This photo shows an unknown vehicle with its headlights on traveling across Balltown Road near the intersection of Pascal Ballard Road. Okay, so Pascal Ballard Road, by the way, um, is right by the Hauk family farm. And so the police early on were already, yeah, looking close to the farm, looking to where Crystal Rogers uh, was apparently last seen, according to Brooks Hauk, who was the last person to see her. And so... We didn't look at that in the last two episodes, so I wanted to show you that. Also, remember when there was one of many search warrants executed at the Hulk family farm, then the, the police actually intended to search the grandmother, the Hulk's grandmother's white Buick, because witnesses had seen, they said they'd seen a, a white Buick or an old Caprice <laughs> and just about a mile from Crystal Rogers' car where it was abandoned. So when those tips started coming in, they start looking at surveillance, of course, they're already looking at that, and uh, that is some footage that they released there. Now, this clip that I'm going to show you here is actually something else that we didn't go over <laughs> so far in our deep dive that Brooks Hauk did. We know that he stole roofing shingles from a Lowe's, even though he, you know, owns like 89 properties or something and rents them out, and he's got farms, he's into construction, he's got three companies or had. Now, of course, he's in jail um, <laughs> with his ankles shackled. <laughs> as we saw. So um, yesterday we looked at that. We'll look at it at the end today as well. We're going to look at it one more time of him going into the jail and then coming out in his jail outfit, okay? So if you missed it yesterday, don't worry. Going to check that out. The point is, here is something else that he did as well that I found. So, oh my word. He was in and out of court before for theft and things like that. But listen to this uh, lady's account here. And thank you so much, Tamara. For Rachel Kiefer and her daughter, it was the start of their American dream in Bardstown. I fell completely in love with the house. 
Kiefer and her realtor made an offer on this home and a contract was accepted. After some agreed upon repairs, Kiefer and her agent went to do a final walkthrough on March 2nd before closing. To their surprise, an unexpected person answered the door. And I said, I'm sorry, who are you? And she said, I live here. My heart dropped. Kiefer says the woman told her she moved in two weeks prior. I have never seen a seller do anything like that in my whole 23 years. It was a shock. I went home and just cried. The seller of... Like you guys, Brooks Hauck owned many properties that he rented out, right? And so he was renting out this property to this lady and <laughs> she'd already paid the deposit and signed everything. And when she got there, just to do a final check, she's like, who the hell are you? And this <laughs> lady answered the door like, what? I live here. I moved in two weeks ago. Wow. So, I mean, this guy also, we are getting, don't worry if you guys are like, hello, the, the thumbnail and things say we're looking at the interview. We are. We're going to be here for a while. So settle in. Okay. We're going to be here for a while today. Happy Saturday to you. If you are watching here, uh, the live stream with us, if you are on the replay, make sure that you do check out the pinned comment or the description box so that you can just see what you want to see in the, the timestamps that I make for you, the chapters, right? That I make for you for every single live stream. So you don't have to watch the whole thing if you don't want to, but if you do, awesome. You also, if you wouldn't mind uh, liking this video and sharing it with hashtag Team Crystal, Crystal Rogers, Justice for Crystal Rogers. You could also do Justice for Tommy Ballard. There's so many hashtags you can use. Um, I put quite a few in the description box as well. That would be awesome. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please subscribe. Hit it again. Click it all. Okay, then you can get all notifications. And before we move on again, um, Erica J said common law is not legal in Kentucky. FYI. Good to know. Thank you for that. Okay, so you're gathering what's happening here with what Brooks Hauk did here. He rented out an apartment to a lady when she got there to move in. Like final check. Imagine if you're like, oh, I'm so excited. I've got a new place. And you go there and there's someone already living in there. And you're like, what? And she never got her money back. That house is Brooks Hauk. You may recall last week he was arrested on four felony counts of stealing shingles from Lowe's. He's also the main suspect in the disappearance of Crystal Rogers. Hauk says he did not honor the contract with Kiefer because the contract was to expire before closing. You know, that's not my fault that the buyers can't perform under the time period in which they put you know, in the contracts. So he rented the house back out. That's what I chose to do, right, wrong, or indifferent. You know, that's what that's what was done. However, the contract was not expired on March 2nd, the day of the final walkthrough, when another person was found to already be living there. Even if it was expired, realtor Stephen Elmore says this. But when the contract was written, we didn't use time as of the essence. And so to be a plus or minus a couple of days is not a big deal. Now Kiefer is out more than $1,200 from the credit report, appraisal, title search, termite exterminators, and home inspection. Feels no remorse at all about, you know, us being out that money. I think that he is lacking a inner moral compass. Elmo Spot on. That lady was so spot on back then. That was in 2018. He'd already been named the prime suspect in Crystal Rogers' disappearance. But to think that he then still continued to steal, you know, to do this kind of stuff. I mean, what else did he do? What else did he do? Or said they tried to get Hauk to reimburse the money. For his agent, he said that uh, he wouldn't give us anything, take him to court. It was hard to come up with, with that money. Um, we had to save our pennies. And now Kiefer's American dream will have to come another day. To have that ripped away is just, there's no words for it. It's, it's mean. After talking with several attorneys to get her $1,200 back, Kiefer says she was told legal fees would cost more than the money she's out. Fallon Glick, WDRB News. Crystal Rogers is an ongoing investment. Oh my word, you guys, let me tell you, it was so difficult to find this clip, which is from Shay McAllister from WHAS 11, also the co-host of the podcast Bardstown, really excellent series on Crystal Rogers' case. And to find a clip where they had announced that they believe Brooks Hauk is the prime suspect. Oh man, that was so hard to find. I don't know why. VPN and all. I even called in for help. It was like, come on, where's that initial press conference where they said they believe He's the suspect, right? 
Uh, also, uh, Kerry said he's always the victim, never his fault. Yeah, he literally, <laughs> in the interview we're going to watch, he's literally like, I'm the victim here. Like, <laughs> he's always the victim, always flips the script. Yes. Okay, so let's listen to this initial. This was October 16th, 2015, okay, where Brooks Hauk was announced as the, the prime suspect in Crystal Rogers' disappearance. So she was last seen on July 3rd of 2015. So July, August, September, October, three months later or so, okay? Investigation, however, they are looking at one suspect and one suspect only. That's her Rogers' live-in boyfriend, Brooks Haug. Sheriff Department says that they still do not have enough evidence to make an arrest in the case, but the sheriff has eight pages of, quote, circumstances leading him to believe Brooks Houck is responsible for Roger's disappearance and for what may have happened to her. This comes only hours after the mayor announced his order for Brooks' brother Nick Houck to be terminated from Bardstown Police. Houck has been suspended from his position with the department since early September. Rogers went missing early July. The mayor cited the reasons for the termination include a phone call he made to his brother warning him about an interview the sheriff's department planned to conduct. He also failed a polygraph exam and then refused to cooperate for an interview with the Nelson County Sheriff's Department. Sheriff Mattingly says he's not worthy of being a police officer. He then made it very clear that he believes Rogers is dead. There's certain things that people do that, uh, um, that when they exist on this earth and she has vanished from earth and uh, I think it's safe to say that she's dead. I would label um, Brooks Hauk a suspect, yes. And there it was, that one little clip. I found one, that one little clip in one place and MB Inc, another YouTuber from the UK, also found one little, that one clip where they say, yes, yes, I would uh, consider him a suspect. He was the prime suspect and it was announced on that day. So the day that they announced that they believe that Crystal Rogers is presumed dead, they also said Nick Houck has been fired from the Bardstown Police Department and Brooks Houck is considered the prime suspect. Okay. To say that she's deceased and you can do that because people uh, uh, have certain ways that they do business. They have to have income. They have to have food. They have to have water. They have to have shelter. They have to have family. Uh, Crystal Rogers was extremely close with her family. She has had no contact with her family. Since they named him a suspect, I feel like they're working now, which I always thought the sheriff's department was doing a good job. But Shame. This is uh, Crystal Rogers' parents, Sherry and Tommy. And Tommy was shot 16 months after Crystal uh, went missing. 16 months later. And the prosecution, if you missed that in the last two episodes, has said that they believe that they now have the gun that was used to kill Tommy Ballard. Which is huge news because they bought the gun from Brooks Houck's brother, Nick Houck. And Nick Houck was using a fake name when he sold this gun to somebody. Clearly, he was caught out, huh? Anyway, so... Oh, man. Okay, here we go. It makes me feel a lot better. Nick was fired from the Bardstown Police Department on the same day his brother, Brooks Houck, was named the main suspect in Crystal Rogers' disappearance. It was October 2015, and under a different sheriff, though newly elected Sheriff Raymond Penaroa stands by the naming of the suspect. I would say he's still the uh, main suspect in the case. Um, nothing has changed in, in the investigation that leads us to believe anybody else is uh, the, the main suspect. Oh. And there you go, they said it there as well. Okay, so I'm just going to pause here in there because there is music in this clip. I hope it doesn't shut down the stream or anything. If it does in the unlikely event, don't worry, we'll just whip up another one. <laughs> oh. Don't understand or the misconception is, yes, we can go make an arrest today. But if we don't have what we need, we go to trial and he walks out that same day and says, yep, I did it. You can't charge him, it's double jeopardy. Yeah. So uh, the main part is you gotta get your evidence, your ducks in a row, and once you have that, um, you, you'll move forward with the case. <laughs> yes, and so that music was part of uh, that clip there it's part of the news clip. I wish it wasn't, you know, it's a little distracting. But anyway, there it was. Now, check this out. 
on the day that they announced that Brooks Hauk is the suspect, the prime suspect in Crystal Rogers' disappearance, because her family had that gut feel all along. <laughs> Crystal's family and friends actually drove past his house, okay? They went to drive past his house and... What do you guys call it? They were honking. I was going to say hooting. In South Africa, we'd say they were hooting. So they were honking past his house. Like, oh yeah, you've just been named a suspect, right? <laughs> Welcome, Sue. Okay, so check this out. It's just going to be a lot of honking now. So sorry about that. Prepare your ears. And we get it. we're getting into it. We're going to get to that interview shortly. Look at them go! Yes, they did that! How are your ears doing? <laughs> Sorry about that, you guys. Sorry about that. I just want to show you what, what a scene they made at his house, right? Thank you so much, Sarah Sunshine. We're almost done with this clip, don't worry. Here we go. a break there with our eardrums i try to turn it down a little bit for you <laughs> but they 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 say justice for crystal all of them wearing their prayers for crystal shirt and their team crystal shirts in the cars and going past in this entire convoy like that's right you've been named a suspect so can you imagine the patience that this whole community had that it took eight years to finally have enough to arrest him the fbi joined the investigation in august of 2020 so Man. Almost done. Okay, so here we get to the interview, which I like to call now the interrogation, <laughs> but the, the police interview, Detective John Snow with Brooks Hauk, and this was on, de uh, sorry, July 8th of 2015. Look at him, sitting there, chill. Okay, remember he's innocent until proven guilty in a court of law, but uh, gut feel, evidence, lots of things, you know, it's just like, wow, finally an arrest. Like, no one was surprised when he was arrested, put it that way. Okay, so now I can turn the sound up for you again. Uh, Detective John Snow did such a brilliant job uh, in this, and we're going to pause every now and then. So if you're one of those people that's new here and you're like, well, I need to have to pause it all the time, not the channel for you. There's many places you can watch these by yourself without Gisela K here in the corner talking on her own channel, The Audacity. <laughs> so I will be making commentary. I guess that's what most of you are here for. I'm just putting it out there for anyone who's new. Okay. Uh, Ladybug says, awesome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, happy Grizzlyversary to you and also to Gerda. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Uh, I just and there is some background noise. Yes, unfortunately. He's not answering his phone yet, so he must still be in the middle of it. No, it's all right. All right. I'm going to take a minute here and read through your statement. That's all right. Yeah, that's... Get an idea. You might have answered some of my questions already, so... But I did, so I, you know, I was trying to cover as much as I could. If my writing's not real legend, you just ask me if I can clarify it real quick for you. <clears throat> No, oh, I'm sorry about that background noise. It is like zzz in the room. I tried my best to reduce it. Everywhere you watch it, it's like zzz, you know what I mean? Sorry about that. Okay, so it is there. It's more in the left ear, the noise, than in the right ear, just in case you're wondering. Okay. Okay, yeah. Four o'clock, Blueberry Center. But I don't know these. I put approximately, I yeah. just put four. Yeah. 
I'm nobody. I, I don't expect you to know exactly. Yeah, you know, no, I mean, there's no you way did. for me to. Yeah. Yeah, that was one of the things that I was confused about because Kylie had said that, that she was gone before. She said she had told me that she was gone before you got back from the gas station and before mom got home. But I don't think that's correct because her grandma said she picked her up about 7.30. So you guys were already gone from the house. She had to be there while y'all were there, right? Is this Friday? You ordered on the new construction on Friday? Yeah, and I didn't put that order, but I put all that right there. The farther you go, the more clarify I oh. get. I broke it down into segments. Oh, these are the people whose house you were working on? Yeah, all these right here are people that I'm overseeing, that I'm speak, uh, that I'm speaking or talking to. We'll just look at my phone to get my exact time. You know, I got my phone in there, and that way you can build a timeline of all this stuff that I I do this every day. So me look. You can just build a timeline with what I provided there for you. He's very condescending in this interview. If you pick that up right, he's just, he's very like, listen, listen. I've just written everything down for you, and you can just. You could just build a little timeline around that. Okay, I do this every day. Look at him. He's very confident. Now, I do it every day. Okay, I've listed everything for you. Right? Okay. <laughs> yes, Wildfire says the videos on this are bad visually and with audio. G cleaned it up the best it can get. I tried my absolute best. I did zoom in. I cut out um, also lots of silent parts. I know it is sometimes interesting to watch these types of people squirm in silence or just to see what they do. Uh, he didn't pull any like Jody Arias moves or Letitia style stuff. He didn't do anything like that. He just sat there trying to act real calm and chilled, right? Okay, so I hope that uh, I do have closed captions activated. So if you just uh, hit the CC button on your side, you should be able to also get closed captions. In fact, I have no what time it is. Right, right. There's no way for me to remember that. I mean, you'll see the more that you get to looking through there, you'll see how much I've got in my head to try to keep up with. All these are guys that are working for me that help me, every one of them. Okay. And then these right here, I skipped a line to break that and put locations, and then I did, did it in subdivision. So y'all know where my vehicle, y'all know where I'm at, my phone and everything. Those are the interesting how he says subdivisions you know i got many subdivisions and i've listed them all there so that you know where i am at what time and all that because when they searched one of his subdivisions recently i think they found something there that led to his arrest it could be that a combination of that as well as the joseph lawson guy they arrested maybe the joseph lawson guy snitched a little bit you know okay so here we can carry on there you guys say <laughs> Are you getting Watts vibes? I don't get Chris Watts vibes. Not quite. I don't know. I don't know. I just get Brooks Hauk vibes. He's very sure of himself. A numerical address, the street address, and this is the type of work that I've got going on past that hyphen mark. Those are the type of work I've got going on at each, each construction site. Every one of them is a separate job. And then this right here is for the whole subdivision, keep the, the Woodlawn Springs homeowner subdivision, the president and all the members, the committee and stuff. All, I, you know, I want to keep the subdivision looking nice, trash and debris and all that kind of stuff, the metal grates in the road, the curb and gutter and all that. And this is just kind of like a daily thing. I've got to go through this every day to keep everybody rolling and everybody happy. And this switches subdivisions. You see, I put copper fields up here, and then these are the number of houses I got going out there. And I've got different subs in different spots. But you see, I says I got different subs in different spots. Yeah, you do. And one of them that was searched for, I don't know how many, they searched all of them. So many properties were searched so many times, so many search warrants, and. Uh, at some point, they found something from digging in one of those subdivisions, right? Okay. <laughs> Kerry says, talks way too much. He really does offer up a lot of details, right? And he cannot handle the awkward silences. He needs to fill that with information. And, you know, you're taking out the trash, the debris. He talks about burning stuff later, which, of course, is just a giant red flag, right? Okay. Is the sound okay for that compared to me? I hope so. Tell me if I must talk softer, okay? 
Sorry, that thing will go off pretty that's constantly. That's fine. That's fine. So I've got people all, all over the county, too. All right. That was him. He's on his way back with your phone. All right. And I thought I had busy days. <laughs> you know, I've just been used to the custom position. You know, that's how I grew up. Right. You know. Was your dad a builder? My dad was a construction worker for CSX Railroad. Oh, okay. About 24, 25 years. Listen. I read a book when I was in high school. That's what started me doing this. I read a book when I was in high school. That's what started me doing this. Oh, <laughs> he read a book in high school. Yes, indeed. Yes, he did. <laughs> Kim, the justice junkie, says, Gizla, I love your commentary. You're so sleuthy. <laughs> Thank you, Kim. Really appreciate it. Do you know what those abbreviations are? Like There's Kentucky, Bank, Lincoln National, Wilson Lincoln. Beer, Town and Country, Springfield State Bank. Springfield. Okay. Let me write that out for you. No, it's all right. There's the only one I didn't recognize. All right. He read a book, you guys. <laughs> Nobody else will write on that though, correct? No. And I'm going to make you a copy to show you. I want to be sure that nobody else yeah. you know, messes with none of my stuff. Right. Right. No, you're going to get a copy of it so that you can look at mine and look at yours and say they're the exact same thing. All right. Okay. In fact, I'll do that for right now. He's like, am I going to get a copy because I don't want anyone to ruin my stuff. <laughs> okay. Take a minute. Go through those page by page and compare them just to make sure that everything's good to go on. Look at him now, checking every single page diligently so that his copy is you know, not correct. So, so we're obviously we, we're hearing tons and tons of rumors, right? All right. Um, and I know Barstown is the rumor mill of the world, <laughs> but in a case like this, um, you know, should it turn into a homicide investigation, any question that I didn't ask doesn't get asked. Does that make sense? Hold on. So. 
did you see any it happens multiple times throughout this interview where detective snow will be like doing a little giggle or like trying to build that rapport with him and he's just he does not respond to that he doesn't like oh yeah yeah it's the rumor mill right nope he's just like looking straight at him now like what is this guy about to say i don't understand what you're saying but well I if i don't ask you then somebody's going to ask me why i didn't ask you later you see what i'm saying sure so when i ask you a question it's not to be offensive it's to get to get the question cleared up so that we can move on to another i right? understand yeah i hope however i can so one of the one of the rumors that we're hearing is that you all had gotten notice from the IRS that you were being investigated for tax evasion. Is that correct or incorrect? No, sir. Not that's correct. Okay. And again, yeah, these are all rumors that people are calling in about. That's so. fine. Um, and who can, where you can get a legitimate source, you also might verify everything. Get right across the street here, up here at Gilbert Brown, Brown Company CPAs yeah. does my taxes. He has for several years. If I need to sign a form to release all his documentation on me for that, you're all more than welcome to it. And that's the easiest way for me. Remember the day before Crystal uh, went missing, she told her mom, he thinks I'm an idiot. He thinks I'm stupid, but I know everything. I've got so much on him that he's avoiding paying taxes with some of his properties. He's taking cash for rent, um, things like that. And she started finding out a lot about his... Uh, tax related activities and maybe others as well right so here he's like no 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 i've got a guy that you can call and he'll just he'll provide you with those documents if you need you know <laughs> well is this guy also corrupt at all or not you know what i mean like is it part of your like circle because at this point we just don't know right i'm not trying to throw blame or shade at the other guy i'm just saying this whole network of hawks and uh, their associates you just don't know what's going on there right Okay, so look at his face here. Continuing on. These are, these are again, these are the rumors. Ask right? whatever you got to ask. Um, had you and Crystal ever talked about breaking up? I mean, obviously we have fought just like any other, sure, uh, sure, sure. Any, other uh, any other couple, but in the last several years, I mean, that right, it, it's came up, but we've always found ourselves together moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, so that it's, it's mentioned but it's never, it's never happened and we've always found ourselves together moving forward. Okay. I know she didn't work out of the home currently, but had she worked out of the home recently? Had she had a job outside of taking care of the rental property? Well, she took care of uh, two young children. Mm -hmm. uh, so she did some babysitting there at the house for some extra money. One little boy was about Eli's size and other was, I don't know how old, but he was a little bit older. And uh, she, I don't know how long, if it was eight months or a year, but she had worked at the store up the road from our house for the, I don't want to say anything discriminatory, uh, they, I don't want to say if they're not Americans, but they yeah, don't. They're Indians. Uh, all right, yeah, I don't, don't want, the, I don't want to say. Um, Native Americans, like why is he finding this so hard to say? Like this guy, oh my word. And wildfire says just like any other couple so cliche right and i think i think if i'm not mistaken they dated for about three to four years four years or something like that so when he's like for several years you know we fight like any normal couple oh really because cps was called when you grabbed a phone out of her uh, i think it's her eldest daughter's hand and twisted her arm that her arm got sprained and yeah they needed help for that so if that's an indication of the behavior, wow, right? Hmm. Nothing. That's convenience gonna, store. Yeah, convenience yeah. store. She worked for some folks up there. I do not know. That. I think it might be Sandy or Sandeep or something like that, but I don't know. Is they worked? At, she worked up there at that gas station for quite some time, but that that's been quite some time ago. Was that before or after Eli was born? I think she started there before before he was born and she did work some there when he was after he was born she was she worked for a pretty good period of time there but it's been quite some time back mm -hmm. yeah because he's two and a half so did you he's think a little she, bit older than two well, and a half yeah. he'll be three in october almost three yeah. all right so i mean why does he not know her routine like it's such a red flag i mean he's pretending not to people have reported that he was very stalkerish very coercive, of controlish wanted to know every move tried to isolate her the usual pattern we see but here he's like 
I don't know, maybe, maybe it was a year before that and it's all just so vague right now. I mean, like, don't you know, like what time she gets up, what time she goes to work, where exactly she works, who's there, you know what I mean? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Stefan said he thinks he can outsmort everybody, like literally everyone. <laughs> he does. He's, he, and he's still probably thought it all along until the moment that he got cuffed, right? In court, when we saw some clips of him in court, he was like, really like chest out, like super confident. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just like strutting around like, yes, yes, yes. Okay. You can just, uh, I'll just sort you out with some information. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, he really does. He thinks it. Okay. Continuing here. So you think she was, you think it was a year ago or better since she worked there? Probably approximately. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I would say give or take a six month window there. Something like that would probably be pretty accurate, but I do not know the answer to that. I do not know. I just know that it's been a period of time. Was it you? Have period you all, of time. You, since you've lived together, have you all always lived on Glenview? That's the only house since Eli has been born. We brought him home from the hospital. We lived there. Okay. Yes. That's so the only she, you all were living there when she was risen. I hope you guys will be here with me throughout this whole. We've got. Uh, two hours and four minutes worth of footage and we are only 20 minutes in so we're going to be here for a while especially with all the stopping i'm guessing i'll be here till midnight my time <laughs> we shall see how it goes but i uh, hope you'll be here because the way that this whole interview and i put clips in between as well for you but the way that it progresses and later he even tries to cry i say tries to you'll see why when he's just like eh, 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 i don't know no 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 he literally tried to cry <laughs> working at the uh, and when she stopped working at the yeah, when she stopped, yes, when she stopped working there. There was, I don't know, maybe four or five other girls that worked up there with her. I don't know their names. But they didn't have a large amount of employees, just a few. When you said you all had had, you know, talk about splitting up, had that been more recently or was that before Eli was born or had that been? I don't, I don't remember the exact, uh, exact dates, but if you'll remember. Re oh, you don't remember the exact dates that Crystal said she actually wanted to leave you. <laughs> oh, you remember. You just don't want to remember. It's like, I don't know. And when he said the, uh, where she worked, I think he said you know, at a gas station, he's like, they didn't have a lot of employees, just a few. Well, you don't say. It's not like a giant corporation or something. He just states the obvious over and over. That's what he loves to do is just state the obvious and add a lot of fluff to every answer, right? Call back in a couple of days ago when we had talked, mm -hmm. whenever usually that had came up, she had always went to like Sabrina's house. Sure or she went out with Brooke or to her parents uh, for a short period of time, a day, day and a half. And uh, after she cooled off um, and we had a chance to talk a little bit, we always found ourselves back together. But uh, there, it has been uh, at times a stressed relationship. I'm not here telling you anything other than that. That is the truth and that's accurate. Yeah. Um, that, that is the truth and that's accurate. Like, okay, bro. But also, when did you hear how he says when she cooled off you know he gave her time to cool off and when she cooled off then they could talk oh really is she the one that needed to cool off because i don't know man the way we know how these cases go i mean hmm. it has been discussed but we've always found ourselves together uh we loved each other very much and that right there's the the bottom uh bottom end of it Past tense. I know we always look at that, but it is a sign, right? I mean, the behavior panel talks about it too. Past tense. We loved each other. And at some point in this interview, he even says, well, I'm a single parent now, one would, I would believe. I mean, he that was who when he said that. And here he's like, we loved each other very much. Why, why, why are you talking past tense there now? Hmm? Wow. Well, the reason I ask is because uh, there are some people that she's associated with that are telling us that she had made some tentative plans to leave, uh, like looking at an apartment at that store above the, the apartment above the store. I'm just trying to figure out 
if that was something that was ancient history or if that was something that was more recent. Well, that's uh, that, that's news to me. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything about that. So when you all, uh, well, let's say let's say the last time you all had discussed splitting up, she didn't discuss any specifics with you about moving to an apartment or anything like that. Just that you all were having some issues and you resolved it. Say all that again. Yeah. Break your question. Break them down. The last bit. time that you all had uh, that type of a disagreement, okay? The last time that there was the possibility that you might split up. Did she specifically talk to you about moving out somewhere? About moving not, out? No, not anything that I She's never had an isolated point saying, hey, I'm, I'm moving here, moving there. I don't. I don't recall anything like that. Okay. No, sir. That, that, that was my question. All right. Just I mean, the way it's like, break your questions down a little bit. It's almost like you start seeing that, uh, you know, the condescending and angry nature come out a little bit there. Like, come on, man, break, dissect your questions for me. Like, who, why are you talking to me like that? Why are you asking me this? I have no idea that she wanted to leave. Okay. She well, sometimes I, and I, I know that you all do this for a little bit. Sometimes I feel like when you ask me a question, you put so many things, I'm, so many things, and I'm thinking we need to dissect it a little bit so I can answer each part specifically rather than put so. And I'm not pleased, no, I'm not upset at me for saying that to you. No, no, no. Put no, so no. much stuff in one. I want to break it down in a simplified, direct question rather than put so much information into one question. Try to come answer one and have a bunch of parts in one. No, that's fine. If you right. need me to, that's fine. What you did right there is just fine. All right, yeah, if I you need you to you ask, you it me, ask it a different way or ask because I want fine. you helping me. No, that's all right. That's, right. that's all right. That's, fine. that's no problem at all. all right. Let's see. Okay. We kind of already we kind of already established the Kylie thing, but just so I'm clear on it. All right. You got home at somewhere between. 5 and 5 30 probably closer to 5 right yes sir um and kylie was there i didn't go in the house at that time oh you didn't okay. no i knew that whenever she was coming behind me i knew that she was going to be there shortly so what i did was i jumped on that little tractor i knew i had a little bit of time and i wanted to go up there and fill it up full of fuel check you know do all that kind of stuff get my fuel levels right so that I didn't have to stop you know I've got as you can tell when you look at that list I got so much stuff to do I don't have any unaccounted for time I'm wide open right. if I stop for oh you don't have any unaccounted for time none especially not on that night right and yes yes <laughs> he is uh, charged with uh, murder and tampering with evidence, but of course he's still got to have his day in court, so he is innocent until proven guilty. He's always been the suspect, the prime suspect, was finally arrested eight years later after extensive searches and a massive investigation and other murders in Bardstown too, which is very interesting. Um, so, but yes, I'm just reminding everyone, if you're only joining now, welcome. I hope that you'll uh, check out the playlist on this case as well. And maybe even check this out from the beginning because there's lots of things that uh, I've shared with you before we got started with this today. And thank you for being here on your Saturday if you are here live with me. Okay. No unaccounted for time, he says. None. Nothing unaccounted for. He's got a very busy schedule. Got home. Doesn't really know if uh, one of Crystal's daughters there. He's not sure. He just jumped, jumped on a tractor and he just got busy. Okay. Because he's got a big to-do list. For a few minutes, I go backwards. And I, I don't have time to do that. So uh, just so you didn't go inside, so you don't know if she was there when you arrived. I don't know if she was there. Or she was riding with Crystal. I do not know. And when you got back from gassing up the tractor, uh, they were all there. Her yeah. and Eli and Crystal. All four of you. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And so all four of you were there. So during that time, the were, were the neighbor says she got home around five fifteen, right. give or take. You know. That's right. So um, from five fifteen. And I think I mentioned to you that I see on the video that you all go past Circle K. Uh, you go well, you go past the storage place and Circle K all within a minute or so, about five minutes after seven, thereabouts, give or take a minute. All right. Um, so, so let's say you left the house around seven o'clock. Fair right. enough. That's fine. Uh, right. There's there's going to be a little bit of time, but I'm just generalizing. So she gets home about. <laughs> He's like, okay, that's fine with me. Um, I thought there was no time unaccounted for, that you knew your schedule, you know, the whole way through, that you provided everything there, but he's like, okay, all right, seven it is. <laughs>
Wow. Also, yeah, I see some of you guys asking in the chat if we're also going to be looking at his brother's interview. And his brother had a long interview as well, as well as a polygraph exam and interview because he failed it. Okay, it was inconsistent. Yes, we're going to look at that. We're probably going to do that tomorrow. Okay, so today we're looking at the Brooks Hauk interview and tomorrow we'll look at his brother Nick Hauk's uh, interviews. 5.15, you get back from the store, you all are there from, let's say, 5.30 to 7 o'clock together, the four of you. Uh, you eat dinner at home, I think you told me last time. Yeah, we didn't fix nothing. Okay. I don't know what we ate. We didn't fix nothing fancy. Right. Sandwiches. Whatever, or whatever we do. Yeah. Um, Ky you guys leave to go to the farm, but Kylie does not go with you. That's correct. She stays there waiting on Kathy. Her memo, Kathy. Her father's mother. Yeah. Kathy Fenwick. Yes. Right. So she, she stays there. You don't know what time she gets picked up, but she's there when you all leave. Yes. Because okay. that was one of the things. I think she got confused. Kylie, not Kathy. Kylie got confused about the time frames when I was talking. But about I, can't, I can't speak on their Yeah, yeah no, 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 that's that. fine. With that. I'm just trying to make sure I'm not confused. All right. Uh, that's my, what you said is my understanding of it. Okay. So you guys leave. You go... Um, Presumably, you go out Bloomfield Road to Guthrie because you go past Circle K and not turn on Woodlawn Road. So you go out there, and then the next time I see you is when you pass uh, Caddyshack, the little restaurant there on 49. You go past there, and it's about the right amount of time for you to be traveling, you know. Uh, and then I, you get to the farm around, uh, best I can figure out by the time frame on the video, is about 19 minutes after 7. So you're actually there, you know, roughly about 7:20. So okay. Um, so you you get there. Um, by the way, I twisted your. I guess it would be your aunt's arm. To <laughs> so we noticed they had the video cameras. That's why. Yeah, that's fine. Time. That's good. So she actually helped you out with with the time. Good. It showed you coming. Now I haven't watched. Mm, it sounds good. He's like, oh, that's fine. Good, good that they've got cameras. Okay, and that they can say that I got home at what time was that? Seven twenty p.m. or so. He's like, okay. <laughs> wow, did he think they're not gonna get so specific or what? That's the full days yet, so I don't know or anything about comings and goings. But I know you got there about twenty minutes after, and you left there uh, about eleven fifty-five thereabouts. Right. Um, so during that time, from reading your statement, uh, you left once and went down almost to uh, Loretta Road and then turned around and came back uh, because you discovered you decided the tractor supply might be closed, right? Yes. So that, uh, you know, a little bit of time there. Uh, how long were you at the farm before you uh, went to get feed and then came back, decided that it was too late? I'm just going to quickly pause and then we're going to carry on. Uh, Dem Rogers said he's married to a lady named Crystal, now blonde, creepier. I was, I saw the rumors that they were married. I wasn't too sure if they did get married, but Yes, he started dating another blonde lady, also called Crystal, shortly after uh, Crystal Rogers went missing. And she was actually charged with stealing signs, you know, b missing and uh, praise for Crystal signs for Crystal Rogers. Like, isn't that, that is so hectic. Oh my goodness. Okay. Do you remember around about? It couldn't have been long. Because you were going to feed the cows, right? Yeah, it could have been probably more than... I don't know, 50, maybe 50, I don't know, 15 or 20 minutes. Okay. I'm just trying to get an idea so when I watch the video, you know, I can kind of look for when you're coming out mm -hmm. and then you're going back. Yes. Um, and when you got to the farm, do you know if anybody was there other than your mom? I don't know. Okay. Did you see your mom when you came in? No, we didn't. Uh, we didn't stop up there. We went straight down there. To, we were going there to feed the cows. Right. So. Well, yeah, but the barns were then... I shot yes. the house. But sometimes sometimes she might park inside, sometimes she she might not, so I don't know if... Right. She got more than one vehicle? She's got a little red truck, uh -huh. and she's got she a saw white, that. and then she's got a, a white, a white uh, SUV. Oh, okay. Uh, Very interesting. So if you remember the clips that I played in the beginning, that they were looking for like a red car and a white car around the area driving around it's quite interesting right and also remember that crystal had told her family that she was going for date night with brooks Hawk that evening and yet he's here busy saying no we went to feed the cows they went to the farm so when she got home they went to his mother's farm the Hawk family farm that his mother owns 
went there and fed the cows. But then it gets so crazy because it was such a rainy weekend that weekend, um, according to all the locals, right? And of course, you can look at the weather data. It was very heavy rain. And so feeding the cows and that late at night makes no sense because later it gets to like midnight he's like oh yeah feeding the cows and then he talks about uh, burning things which makes no sense in the rain either and really would crystal be walking with uh, a two and a half year old and this guy on the farm in the rain i mean it just never uh, makes no sense it doesn't make any sense Uh, marie says gee did they ever find the person who shot crystal's father well They have just announced um, a few weeks ago that we looked at yesterday that the prosecution says, the special prosecutor in this case says, that they now believe they have the gun that killed Tommy Ballard. And that gun they bought from uh, Nick Houck, who was using, who was Brooks Houck's brother, he was using a fake name when he sold this gun to someone. So they must have obviously, you know, set him up. And so he he may be facing charges as well soon. We don't know. That is rumor. Uh, that is going around that he could be arrested soon as well um, in connection to Tommy Ballard's death. Yeah, and of course interfering here. We'll see that he calls his brother during this uh, investig- in- interview as well. <laughs> Interrogation, this interview. So yeah, we shall see. I really hope there will be uh, justice for multiple victims in Bardstown, Kentucky with these arrests that have been made recently. Okay. Um. But I can't, I was, that 15 to 20 minutes is as close as I can, and that's a guess, but I'd say it's pretty accurate. Uh-huh. She, uh, I think your mom told me she had been mowing grass. Do you know if she was mowing when you got there? or? She's it? always outside doing stuff. She's uh, more of an outside person than inside, mm-hmm. but uh, she likes to mow grass. Sometimes she'll mow it whenever it don't even need to be mowed. <laughs> so... Uh, but no, I, I don't believe, I don't recall her mowing if she was mowing. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of area there that if she was mowing, that I could have pulled in and not, not seen her. But I don't believe she was mowing. Yeah, okay. Um, and it's not, not, all, that, not all, that, all that important. I'm just trying to get an idea of what was going on. All right. Um, so there, I noticed when I was out there um, yesterday, I guess it was. Um, so there's a bulldozer in the drive. Mm-hmm. There's a tractor, actually two tractors in the in the barn, right? There's a tractor with a bucket and yes. a tractor that looked like maybe it was leaking hydraulic fluid. Maybe somebody or had an attachment. Or or, yeah. yeah, maybe an attachment. Yeah, all right. Um, so when you, while you were out there Friday, did you operate any of that equipment to take care of the cows, or how do you normally no, do that? No, I don't. By hand? Mm-hmm. No, when you feed the cows, you just get the sweet feed and you holler for them, you shake a bucket, and they, because repetitious, they know to sure. run. They know I don't know if you fed them hay. Now, if, now, if you're talking about in the wintertime, you have to have a tractor that can handle We don't do square hay. I mean, in the wintertime, we're going to have to handle a round bale. Right. And that's done by tractor. That we, You know, we're not going to, you can roll one by hand. you got four or five guys, but I mean, we're not going to do that. We're going to take a tractor and. Right, but I'm talking about Friday. You didn't no, have to wait any No. Okay. So you just fed them out of the bucket this week. Yes. And, uh, so now Aaron probably, he's out there raking hay and stuff, he might very well have done that. I don't know if it was Friday, but he's been out there the past two weeks doing hay, and I don't I don't drive the equipment because that's not what I do. Aaron, uh, Aaron takes care of all that, and he uh, he bales the hay, he cuts it, he does all the, you know, all the mechanical work out there, and... Now he, who is Aaron? Uh, the person that does all the work out there. But I mean, is he related Aaron, to you? But I thought you got there and jumped on a little tractor because you got such a busy schedule. <laughs> he's like, I don't drive any of the equipment. Look at that mouth. <laughs> Look at that mouth he's making there. Mm-hmm, the purse lips. Isn't that a sign of deception or what? Isn't that what we learned? <laughs> Look at him go. Now that looks like a Chris Watts moment. Does that remind you now of him? <laughs> Everyone earlier is like Chris Watts vibes. And well, there it is. <laughs> Home. Yeah, we see those lips that you're hiding there. You're lying. Are. Is he a farmhand or what is he? Yeah, he's the he's the city mechanic right up here for the city of Bardstown, the bus garage. Uh-huh. Um, he does all the mechanics and does all the inspection reports for the city uh, for the city uh, of Bardstown bus school system. Right, but how is he connected to your family? What, how? He's, there's no blood uh, blood relation. We graduated together in high school. You and he did. Yes. Okay, and, and so does he. he does he get the hay off of your farm or? Uh, 
five of the uh, cows out there that are out there uh -huh. are his. Oh, okay. So what he does is, I don't, whenever you look at this paperwork, I've got so much stuff going on, I'm not a farmer. I enjoy farming, but I don't farm. So what he does is an added benefit to me. He takes care of all the fencing, all the labor, keeps the equipment running. If it's round bales or busting ice and stuff like that in the wintertime, he does all that. He's got the time. He gets off early at 3 o'clock in the day. So he will come out there, he, and he knows about the mechanics. I'm not a mechanic, so he'll go out there and cut all the hay and prepare for the winter. Gotcha. He uses his time to do all that, to use the grounds out there for his cows, because he's only got about seven acres here in town, and he wants to keep growing and expanding. And a way to do that, I don't... I don't have time to bush hog and all that, so I would rather keep up with the grounds by letting somebody do that and participate and let them, I, I don't charge him no money. Right. You see what I mean? Right. So he keeps his cows out Yes, there. it's a good trade-off. Gotcha. Absolutely. Okay. But he wasn't there Friday that you saw. You. So that guy's there all the time doing all the work, you know, all the farming, but yet that Friday, no, it was up to Brooks to feed the cows at midnight. Because that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Just think of the picture he's painting. So his mother is like mowing the lawn for no reason in the dark at night in the rain, right? So dark, stormy night and mother's mowing the lawn. <laughs> and then he's feeding the cows with Crystal and their two and a half year old there. Okay then. Right, I'm a very visual person, so I'm trying to visualize everything that he's saying here. What kind of story are you trying to paint here? It just makes no sense, right? <laughs> okay, continuing on. No, he wasn't there Friday night. No, when never. you were there, right? Mm -hmm. Not not before, I don't know yeah. not before, but when you were there, he wasn't mm -hmm. there. Um, so you all fed the cows with the bucket uh, and watched them eat. And then you walk. now when you said you walked the road to the... The grab you're talking about not just to the turnaround that goes right no, the that's just, no, that's just no. We walked to the back to the where the where where the old county road goes to where I put the yes exactly okay. where the road gets a little harder. I mean, it's still you can still drive a car on it, but there's right. a little bit of grass in the middle. But right. yeah, we yeah we and that's what go when you get to the if I'm cold to cycle at the top of the hill. right if you get to the cult, if you get to the turnaround here is this, this the is house is right here right, in the bar right here. There. It goes yeah, right, right here is where right. yes, and it goes back there far. And there's three big pins back through there. There's three separate fields where we rotate the pasture and stuff. Gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. And are the you said you walked from gate, uh, field one? Yeah, let me just make it real clear yeah. for you. Is this? Can you just you can put this? Let me just make it real clear for you. Okay, let me just let me just start drawing. Now we've seen this happen before <laughs> in cases, right? I'm going to draw this all out for you. Let me explain. The layout of this farm. Dark, stormy night. I don't farm. I just got to feed the cows, you know, on date night um, at midnight. Yeah. And I mean, also, why are cows getting fed at midnight? Anyone who has a farm, have you ever heard of that? Cows being fed at midnight. I don't know about that. <laughs> Jules, welcome. Welcome. Welcome to anyone who's new here uh, in this community. If you are just lurking, don't be shy. You can say hi to us here. You can chat with us in the live stream if you are watching live. And I hope that you will subscribe and join this community. We're a pretty nice bunch. <laughs> okay, let's carry on. Some your paperwork or whatever. Yeah, yeah, what? I didn't write that. But... No, I drew it out for somebody else. <laughs> And then, of course, you know the defense does something like this. Right, Come, kind of gives an angle off mom's place. And then it goes all the way back. So somewhere right in here, there's a, this is a double gate. This is where we go in, right here is where, right. where we enter the field because this is barbed wire, you know. And then it, over here is kind of an octagon's eight, but it ain't eight. This is like a... Uh, a pin out here that we can move and then there's some trolls yeah. and stuff in mm -hmm. here and then I think right here that field separates pretty and then there's a gate another gate right here so this is number 
one, and then way up here, this is number two, and then, and then number three goes a far piece back through there. Right. So we go through this gate, and then the gate from two to three, you know, the other gates up here. Right. You know what I'm? Yeah. And then um, there's more food in the in field number three than there are on these other two because these two are eight down close. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, and it's cooler back there in the ravines and holler for the cows than if they're on this flat land and they would rather stay cooler and eat back there and there's a pl they're in a big pond back there but there's a little pond for them to, for a water supply um, too right now so more often than not they go back there in that third field but like uh, in later in the evening a lot of times we're consistent at the times but sometimes we're you know we're not but a lot of times in the evening they'll drift up here thinking we're, they're going to get some feed right so, for the sweet feed right yeah right those damn cows. <laughs> I love all animals. I don't mean if the cows are just like, those damn cows, they come drifting up there thinking they're going to get something. Well, well, it sounds like it was their lucky night because you were like, I'm going to feed these cows at midnight. Okay, then. Thanks for that little sketch, bro. <laughs> right? So you all, when, when you all went for the cows, though, I think Yeah, we went in this gate right here and then we walked all the way back through there. Because they weren't up in field one. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, so you fed the, fed the cows. Um, what else did I read there? Sorry. Sure. I'm doing all kinds of crazy stuff over there. You fed the cows, and then you come back out, and you walked the uh, the road right the road that goes to the yeah after we come after we come back out from walking up through here then um we walk out out to here which is, there's another did i see your pen again mm -hmm. so there's another it ain't exactly straight but it looks something like this that's your the driveway yeah this driveway to the barn uh -huh. right and then uh and we walk out the road and we just walk back through there. Okay. And how long would you say that road goes back into there, do you know? If you had to guess? I don't know, I bet it's a good mile. From from, from the, the barn to the end of that road and back? So a couple mile walk going to and from. Yeah, if you go, because there's a cul-de-sac right here, there's also a cul-de-sac I put in up here, and then there's a third cul-de-sac at the very end. By a creek back here in the very back. Oh, okay. okay. But you think it's about a mile? Maybe I would say close, close, yeah. Okay. So you walked to the end of there and came back. Did y'all do any work on the barn or anything while you were there? No, we didn't do no work on that barn. Didn't work on the, the driveway or anything like that? Mm -hmm. the, the dozer, the reason I ask is because of the dozer that's sitting there. Did, it, did somebody use that to put that driveway in or put rock on that driveway recently? Or? No, the, um, the, uh, on, a, on Saturday, I moved it over there. It was parked. That dozer, I've got a skid steer also broke yeah, down. Right. I've got a, a skid steer right here with some weeds growing up around yeah, it. Yeah. And then I had a dozer. The dozer right here, mm -hmm. and I did. Um, I backed it right across here, right here, and there's been a water. This uh, water coming in the uh, in the front. There's a big door right here in the front of the barn, mm -hmm. and water had been going in the uh, in the front of it right here. And then I moved, and I plus I wanted to. She's always complaining about my mother. Mm -hmm. Is always complaining about the the trash and rubble that I, you know she she likes to keep everything neat and clean she likes to keep the grass mowed short but i'm not going to pay a high bill to take that stuff to the county dump when i can clean it up easy it's too much to do all at once but i can every time i come out there i can throw a match on it or burn a little pot eli likes to roast marshmallows so what i do and we spend so much you'll see it doesn't it it almost sounds like um Chad Daybell when he's just like well, I, I might just have a little 
this little burn pile there, you know, roasting marshmallows, whatever. Like, that's the second time he's mentioning burning. It's just a bit concerning, that, right? But now he's talking about the Saturday. Moving equipment around. I mean, it's all very shady. And it's all just a lot of fluff. <laughs> he still never really answers the question, right? But you can see he doesn't really want to answer questions about the barn either. time out there, what I do is put a pile and I will uh, I'll light a little a little piece of it on fire mm -hmm. and then that way I don't have a huge fire but I've got enough that I'm constantly getting rid of some and then they won't charge me to that high density fee out there at the uh, at the dump so I'm going to take all the, this equipment this skid steer too I just haven't drug it over there yet and then all these trailers with them weeds are high I'm going to try to get it on both sides of these uh, doors you know just to mm -hmm. get it out, out of there. <coughs> Did you but learn I, anything Friday night when you were out there? Yeah, I'll, yes, it's not a I don't want the stuff piling up to the moon. I always light a fire. There was a little. He says he burned some stuff there on the Friday when he was there. So, first it was walking there. Maybe his mom is mowing the grass. They're walking, feeding the cows. It's raining heavily, by the way, which he keeps forgetting about. It's like he, he just didn't think people are going to look at the weather or what. People won't remember. Anyway, it was raining a lot, but he's like, yes, yes, he did burn things. How? How were you burning things? in the pouring rain outside. It makes none of the story really makes sense. So yes. Well pile probably I'll write that on there. Right here with this little little pile here. Here I think y'all may have covered it up. Y'all got I think we did some stuff there. everywhere, but that's Yeah, I apologize that, that they don't matter. I, I mean, well the dog uh, the, that lady's dog she said it acted like there was something under there. Oh, that's fine. That's, that's fine. So I had some water problem right there, and I'm, you know, I'm in the process of getting that right there fixed. We dug out at, and, uh, right there in front of that door to try to let a, a vein of water come out because it's too low, the slab is. And that was Saturday? That was Saturday when I did that. Do you remember what time Saturday you got out there? Mm-hmm. Was it before lunch? You had to lunch? Oh yeah, it was. It was. It was well before lunch. It wasn't. It, it was morning time, but it wasn't early morning. It wasn't late morning. It was about mid morning. So, you had a little fire. When was that? After you took your walk, or before you took your walk? Um, I lit it. I don't know if I lit it right before we took off walking. I know we fed the cows first because I want to do that as quickly while we had still plenty of daylight. I don't know if I lit the fire before we walked back here or right when I got back. I could have done it either one. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. Convenient. Now, remember he had nothing. No time was unaccounted for, okay? No matter where he is, he's got a lot of stuff to do. We've learned he read a book in high school and he's a very busy guy. <laughs> and he has like trade-offs with people sometimes, okay? And so now he's describing the evening as now you're you've got a burn pile going and you just don't remember if you started that like before the walk and the feeding of the cows or after. Just just don't remember. Just don't recall. So you lit the fire. I'm assuming then you probably don't leave until the fire burns out. Then, well, would you leave it burning? I don't know. I, yeah. I generally don't like to walk. Like yeah, that. but if it if it's just a bed of coals, oh, it's it's not, it's, I mean, it's not like burning. Yeah, burning. yeah. I, I would yeah. I wouldn't leave if I thought there was any danger. Not when I, especially when I got all this right, right, and right. stuff yeah, right yeah. there. But I mean, if it's died down and it's just a big bed of coals, I'm I'm not too worried about it. Yeah. You know, so especially if it's not in August or September when everything's just perfectly dry. It wasn't a uh, yeah, plenty of rain. Yeah, and the ground's wet and dew's on, yeah, it's not a big deal. To me in my I'm not a firefighter, so But you definitely moved the dozer on Saturday. Yeah, I moved the dozer on Saturday. Um the, is there a septic system with that barn? Like it sounds to me, and my and my understanding is correct, he's kind of starting to blend Friday and Saturday. You know, and Friday was July 3rd and Saturday was July 4th. So the 4th of July, we know he said, well, he says it later, um, if you've ever seen it before, right? He says he went to his, the, the family farm. So he was there again. So he was there on, so why, why did he have to go there on Friday night then? You know what I mean? Especially so late in the rain. 
And where's Crystal? He doesn't, he doesn't talk about Crystal, huh? He doesn't talk about her at all. And Barbara says he just said he was running out of daylight, which that is sus because running out of daylight is also different to be like, oh, I was there on the 4th of July and just, you know, feeding the cows again or, I don't know, his little burn piles or whatever he's saying. But, ooh, yeah, this guy, <laughs> Kathleen says he doesn't like paying for shingles. He doesn't like that either. No. Mm -mm. So, yeah, his story is starting to fall apart a little bit here. Continuing on. Uh... There, uh, there he is. Okay. It's, it's never been uh, been hooked up. There's never been a toilet put on there. But I tell you who put it in there, uh, and he can tell you exactly how 100% it was done. It's Casey Ballard. Casey Ballard did. Mm -hmm. And Casey Ballard is that her? That's her brother. brother. That's yes. what I was thinking. Yeah. Um, so he put the. Set, is there a, like an opening somewhere where you can access it? Oh yeah. Maintenance and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Where would that be at? There's a big pole. Out in the middle of this, in field number one right here, uh -huh. there's a... So, he's enjoying bringing up uh, Crystal's brother now. Casey Ballard, you know who put that in there? Like, what was he I think he's talking about uh, something that was put in on the farm there. I missed it now again. I can't remember exactly what he said, and I don't want to botch it. If you heard it, tell me. But now, my, the point is that he's like, Casey Ballard, let's have a look at Crystal's brother. He knows this property well. Like, wait, sorry, what? Why are you deflecting there, sir? Hmm? Great big uh, pole like this right here. Uh -huh. That marks the end of it. It's got one big lateral big pipe on it, uh -huh. and it, it's marked out there so someone don't crush it with a tractor. So the opening for the top of the septic tank? No, 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 the top, the opening. You're talking about the lateral line. Yeah, right? that just daylights out. Septic tank. That is what he said. I didn't want to botch it, but yes. Um, okay. Now, right. the, the, uh, there's a big, underneath that, right where this fence is right there, uh -huh. there's a big round lid right here. Okay. Next to fence for field one. Mm -hmm. right? And how long has that septic system been there? I noticed the work probably about kind of ongoing. Probably about three, probably about three years, two three years. years. I just never did finish that barn because um, I've had so much other stuff going on. But in that barn, I've kind of got a little, a little. Yeah, I saw where you were putting the cedar plant. Uh, I never got done with it, but I'm close to getting it done. Right. I just never made it that far. Right. But yeah, the right, right where that little plumbing, that little bathroom is, right on the outside of the barn, there's a big, uh, a septic tank right there, and then there's a great big long piece of pipe right here, a bleeder valve, and then it's marked by there's a big pipe, there's an iron, uh, iron T post out in the middle of this field, and then I took a piece of PVC pipe that's weather resistant, and I just slid over top. It would stop the post from rusting, mm -hmm. and it's also much taller than the grass, so that if the grass did get up real high, somebody wouldn't hit it with a bush hog, or wouldn't hit it with a mower or something like that. All right, so you guys, are, you've taken your walk. The fire is down, maybe not out, but it's down enough, and you're leaving, uh, and it looks, again, looking at the video, Looks like it's about five minutes till midnight. All right. That's a, to me, and I've got a couple of kids. Look how he's like, all right. Now he's sitting up. Oh, crap. Like he's saying just before midnight. So exactly what happened in those four hours? And Crystal's family did say that she did sometimes go there with him to his family farm, right? Um, and they did roast marshmallows and make hot dogs and things out there on the farm. So he's sort of throwing that in and be like, oh yeah, but he, he wasn't really talking quite about that because initially he also talks about trash and debris and all kinds of things. He mentioned a quick little mumble of roasting marshmallows, burning stuff or roasting marshmallows or whatever, like, okay. So yeah, what did he do? What did they do for four hours, according to him? So um, Detective John Snow, someone was saying, why does the police officer not pick up on his BS? I'm sure he does. They're really skilled at what they do to continue to, you know, uh, build rapport and just let the guy think that they are not onto him. And I mean, it did take eight years uh, to get enough evidence, um, even though Crystal's body has never been found. I don't know if they what they found, um, what items of interest they may have found now to be able to arrest him. But 
Um, I think he's doing a really good job. Anyway, so let's listen now to the timeline because like, oh, okay, so so you got there. You don't know about you know the fire. Was it out now? What? It's in the rain. It's pouring rain. Okay, now the walking to the cows. But what happens and why is it until midnight? So have a listen here. And also he's saying that Crystal and Eli, the two and a half year old son that they had, was with her. Okay. You know, um, but everybody parents a little differently. Uh, to me, it seems a little late to be out on the farm with a two and a half year old. Where is he at at midnight? Is he has he been asleep in the car for a while? Is he still no, wide he's still or wide or open, and he'll really any uh, anybody he's used so used to sleeping so later in the morning. His normal day that's his seven eight o'clock in the evening. Really? Because really? she sleeps much later in the morning, she stays up. So like yeah, and it's always been that way. Notice how he says she he doesn't want to say her name or anything. She sleep. Look at it. Look at his lips again. I do pause it at the right moment. So <laughs> look, that's a perfect shot. It's like, mm, you believe what I'm saying? Because I believe myself. <laughs> oh my word, this guy. Also, the case is no laughing matter. I'm just laughing at him. I'm looking at him and like, who is gonna buy the story? Oh my goodness. Okay, so <laughs> let's have a listen. So he's, he's, wide open. he's wide open. Yeah. Okay. I've been advised, you know, to ride the wave and keep on keeping on. And that's what I've done, and it's worked out great this far. If he's so innocent, why is he riding the wave? Why don't he come out publicly and interview and say, hey, I had nothing to do with this? If he is so. If somebody accuses me of something, I'm going to fight back and I'm going to prove my innocence. What do you think happened? I think Brooks how killed my daughter. So you guys get back in the I've just put little clips in, you know, uh, in between for you as well to make sure you're concentrating. Are you awake? Are you alert? Are you here with us? Thank you for being here. Everybody focus. <laughs> okay, so... Um, I mean, Sherry makes a great point. That was Crystal's mom. They're just like, um, why is he riding the wave? Because like, I'm riding the wave. It's working out great so far for me. Like, mm-hmm. You're riding the wave for eight years until he was arrested. <laughs> right? And charged with murder and tampering with evidence. Load up in the truck. Excuse me. Load up in the truck and you drive back. You leave out. You, uh, I see you leave out the driveway at about 1155. Um... Somebody passes you on the drive back on Loretta Road about 10 minutes after midnight or so. He says, roughly, we're still kind of narrowing that down, but um, roughly sees you about 10 after midnight, which wouldn't be uncommon. It's been raining most of the day. You know, the roads are kind of wet. 15 minutes from your mom's house to to uh, the golf course, there's Caddyshack. Mm -hmm. not, not a big deal there. Um, and so did you, do you remember, or did you go straight home on Friday night or did y'all stop somewhere or, cause I'm thinking if that's their normal seven, eight o'clock in the evening, it might be dinner time. Did you stop and eat something or did you go straight? Yeah. What was for dinner? Hmm? Nope. Didn't eat. He doesn't talk about dinner at all. So what did you have? Look now he's like, oh crap. <laughs> because now it's like 10 past 12 when they're getting home. Do you guys remember the map time we did yesterday? Or do you need a reminder? Tell me. <laughs> uh, we're going to look at the map again. But uh, yeah, to it's not that far to his house, but where Crystal lived as well. So now he's like, oh, yeah, no. And, and the way he talked about his own son saying he's wild. He's just wild for him. You know, midnight is the same as like seven or eight at night. Like, OK, there's still bedtime. You know what I mean? Wow. OK. We did not eat anything. I went straight home. OK. So you went straight home. So uh, let's, if we assume that he's correct in about 10 minutes after midnight, another 10 minutes to the house or so. So you hear Yeah, I just, I don't see it being that late. I mean, if that's what some of the things say, you know, I guess you'd have to, to kind of go by that. Um, but yeah, we, we didn't stop anywhere. We went straight home. Okay. So you could have, you could feasibly be home. He's like, I don't see it that way. So his reality is a little different. He's like, midnight. <laughs> Where are you getting that? Well, okay, if there's video footage, ugh, fine. Midnight. I just didn't think it was that late. Yeah, so what happened between 8 and 12? We'd love to know. We'd love to know, right? Home by 1130. You can be home. That, yeah, I which still is, like it. Which is what you told me. You thought, you know, you thought, mm -hmm. or I'm sorry, not 1130, uh, 1230. You could feasibly be home by 20 minutes after 12. 
It okay. passes you at 10 minutes after 12. All right. Which is a little off from what you originally told me, and you just said, I still think it's a little off, but we're gonna, we'll go with what the camera says as opposed to memory, because sometimes memory is not that great. All right. And I checked the time on her camera, and I'm allowing for about a nine minute gap there between what my watch says and what her camera says. All right. So, which puts you leaving there by 11.55, which, you know, again, 15 minutes to, to uh, Caddyshack is not terribly bad in the rain. Uh, so, it could have been that he passed it 10 minutes after midnight, putting you home roughly 20 minutes after 12. All right. And he's like, all right, oh, okay, <laughs> all right, if you say so, Detective Snow. Psh. Does it have to be that time though? Couldn't we just have already we gotten home at like nine? You know, like no, actually there's video surveillance and all kinds of other evidence. Um, so what I'm gonna do quickly now is show you the map. Just, it'll be very brief, just so that you can visualize that as we listen to his story, okay? Quick map time over here. Okay, so what we got going on is just zoom in for you guys quickly here. Okay, so if we look at it, where they were feeding the cows at, you know, <laughs> getting there at like 720 ish or so, doing who knows what, arriving home, his home and where Crystal lived is here this would be where his home would be okay so what i actually got to do just give me a second quickly um i mean we could measure it as the crow flies but it's not they said it would take about 15 minutes even with the rain and everything so if you missed the map time yesterday um check it out okay we went over it in detail i just quickly want to see because the house was uh it's too it's Pashal ballard lane is the hawk family farm and they go to Glenview Drive, it's not doxing, it's out there on all the interviews already from the beginning, right? Uh, Casey Cat said, do you believe other family members besides his brother may end up charged? Good to see you, by the way. Casey Cat, thank you so much for your sticker. And I think they could be, especially because they secretly recorded the grand jury proceedings. I mean, I don't know if later that will have any charges or not. Uh, <laughs> Savannah, thanks for being a member for 21 months and you're like, map time. Okay, so let me show you this map here quickly, where from the Hauk family farm to where the house was is 19 minutes or so, 11 miles, driving like that. I mean, if you drive this one, 21 minutes. So yeah, about 20 minutes or so going there. But why did they go there in the first place? Especially if Crystal said it was date night. She was last seen at a Walmart by um, a relative, which was Sherry, her mother's uh, cousin and aunt. So she thought she was going on date night, you know? And then it's like, oh, we're going to my mother's house. <laughs> okay, and and then from there, what happened? No one really knows exactly, right? Sure, well, hopefully we'll one day know at the trial, like, what did this guy do? But also, I know he's innocent or proven guilty. He's a suspect, he's been charged. I just have to say that as a disclaimer. Um, and as far as we know, they have never found crystal's remains which is very sad so sad for a family so this is sure it's like justice the wheels of justice are turning and everything but man they just want to find they want to know what happened to crystal where where is she right okay so yeah that is just to picture it because he's like all right i don't think it was that late so as you can see it was about 20 minutes right so 20 minutes and if they get home at 10 past 12 yeah it's around 11 50 or so that they're leaving his uh mother's house the family farm the hawk family farm so what is he doing also his brother's house is right here so i wonder if cameras revealed anything from there right okay let me bring this back up for you sorry now we ultra zoomed in here <laughs> okay and uh we'll continue on let's put the sound back on for you all right fair enough yes so you guys get home 20 minutes after 12 right there but thereabouts uh, I think you, you said you went to bed first. Do you remember about how long you were home before you went to bed? I went to bed immediately. So when you guys got in, you went and did your nightly routine and you're going to bed. 
Uh, I think you told me that uh, she stayed up, uh, and Eli, did he stay up as well? He was up. Uh, and what was she, where was she at? When if, he, if there's any activity. So you want us to believe that a two and a half year old was out at the farm in the pouring rain from eight o'clock or 20 past seven, actually till midnight, walking around, watching you feed the cows, there's this burn pile going on, and then what? And then when you get home, you're the only one that yeah, you go immediately to bed. But Eli stays up. The two and a half year old son they had stays up. And so does Crystal. She's playing games on her phone. Remember, Crystal's car was found on uh, two days later, July 5th of 2015, and it was found abandoned on Bluegrass Parkway at mile marker 14, which is not a route that she normally takes. And in the car was her uncharged cell phone and her keys and her purse. So, I don't know, it makes me wonder if he gave her phone to Eli to play games on or something, or if he played games on her phone, or if he just let it run flat, right? I'm not too sure, or whatever happened. We don't know. Going on in the house, he doesn't, he doesn't want to go to bed. Mm -hmm. If we both, if everybody turned the lights out and we just got in the bed, he's going to follow us in there and lay down with us. But if I go to bed and she stays up, he's not going to come in there to bed till all the lights are out and then she goes to bed. If I was doing something like that and she was in the bed, he's going to stay up with me until the lights are out until I go in there. Do you see what I'm sure? Yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. what so he's, he's going to stay up with mom. Right. So, and. Yeah, a lot of that made absolutely no sense, but okay, bro. But also he says the next day, so after that whole story, he's saying that um, their son would stay with Crystal. Okay, he doesn't want to say Crystal's name, still not, still not, doesn't want to talk about her. He just says she in very distancing language, right? So, but you're saying Eli would stay with Crystal. But yet when you wake up the next morning, Eli wakes up in the bed with you and Crystal's just gone. I mean... That makes no sense. Before you went to bed, or as your any conversation, I know you told me that you all had a conversation Friday evening sometime about the kids. We, we'll talk about that in a minute. But the you said you all talked about the kids Friday evening. Does that conversation bleed over to when you get home, or is that conversation done? No, whenever I, I got home, I went to bed. I mean, it was relatively, you know, quickly when I got. Uh, got in there okay. um, the, the conversation does not bleed over okay so you go to bed she stays up what's what's she doing she's she's just on her phone uh playing i don't know what game but she normally plays a game right. some kind. she's got several of them on there but i don't know which one okay so she's on her phone messing around doing mm -hmm. whatever and you go to bed you do you know what time she uh, eli came to bed or she put him into bed i don't know I don't don't have I normally go to bed earlier than that, so when I, I went to sleep, you know, I'm a pretty heavy sleeper, I wouldn't have noticed, you know, if he crawled in there, you know. Oh, okay, you're the early sleeper, but the two and a half year old, your own son, no, 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 he's wild, he stays up, you know. <laughs> um, what? He's like, I'm a very good boy, I go to bed quite early, you know. These two staying up late, what? <laughs> Makes no sense. So you said you're a pretty heavy sleeper, so your phone uh, is getting phone calls, I can see it on your phone logs, uh, before 7 o'clock in the morning on mm -hmm. Saturday morning. Do you hear that going off? Is it? Do you normally keep it in there? In the yeah, but I don't, you? I don't have to. Uh, at that time, I've got a, an alarm on my phone at 6 o'clock and 7 o'clock. Sometimes I've got them at 4 and at 7, but my alarm mo most mornings goes off. I always have it for 6 and 7, but I'll wake up before my alarm goes off. But that's not a problem for me to get called really early in the morning. So what time do you think you got up on Saturday morning? I probably, I probably woke up around, you know, in between that time, like 6 or 7 o'clock, and then I left, uh, you know, I got, did my normal thing, put, you know, Change my clothes, put my clothes on, and and uh, and headed out. You know, shortly after that, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, he shrugs like no biggie. I just woke up, you know, at six-ish or seven-ish, and just did my normal thing, and then just headed out. Oh, okay, no concern whatsoever. Still, no concern now. This was on July eighth, twenty fifteen. July third, uh, 
was the last time Crystal was seen. So on the 4th of July, he's like, no, I just got up and went to my mama's house, basically. 4th of July celebrations, took Eli with him. Wow. Yeah, Candy says, wait, he goes to bed early, but they were at the farm past midnight and losing daylight around midnight, huh? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And if he's such an early sleeper, you know, go he goes to bed early, you guys. Why is he on a Friday night feeding the cows at midnight or, you know, between eight and midnight? What is he doing? Why are you out there in the first place? Who asked you to be there to feed the cows? Isn't there someone else to feed the cows? Because that's kind of how I explained it as well. Or is that like, <laughs> do you have to drive all that way? What, every Friday, every evening? My word. Okay. Well, I, I'm sorry, I forgot to ask you something. There, on the phone records, there appears to be a phone call um, around midnight. All right. On Friday night, Saturday morning. All right. I'm talking about on, on your way home, basically. All right. Now, let me quickly tell you that this phone call comes from a Stephen Lawson. And you may have remembered the name Lawson. Like, wait a minute, what? Stephen Lawson does have a son called Joseph Lawson. Joseph Lawson just happens to be the name of someone who was arrested right before Brooks Hauk. Stephen Lawson is someone who worked with Brooks Hauk. So if Joseph Lawson is his son, which speculatively would make a lot of sense, right? It's very plausible. It's not 100% proven, but it makes sense that they all know each other, right? But anyway, so if it is his son, interesting that Joseph Lawson uh, was charged with conspiracy to commit murder and tampering with evidence. And we went over an entire background of Joseph Lawson yesterday. If you missed that, check it out, okay? Make sure you do your homework <laughs> before tomorrow, because tomorrow we continue on. We're going to be looking at the Nick Hauk uh, interviews and also, I don't know if we'll fit that in as well. Maybe his, uh, you know, lie detector test and how that all went. Okay. Um... Do you know who that person was that called you around midnight? Do you can, remember talking about well, a phone call? Can you, uh, can you just call the number back? I don't I mean, I could. I, I could. I mean, I could phone 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 yeah, yeah look at my there. phone, but I don't, re I don't remember you that. You don't remember getting a phone call on the way home? Mm -hmm. Would it be unusual for you to get a phone call at midnight? I mean, it is for me, and I work for the sheriff's office. I get calls quite regularly. Uh -huh. Uh, some of the people that do the tile for me, I wouldn't put it past them to call me at any time they didn't. I thought you were an early sleeper though. And you get up, you know, your alarm set for six and seven. So why would people just often or randomly call you at midnight for six seconds or so? A couple of seconds? And then one could speculate what they said, right? I'm not gonna, but I'm sure it would be a very few words. <laughs> Laid brick through the day, and then they're they're tile my houses at night. The Thomases I wrote on there, Derek and his brother uh, Tyler Thomas, they'll call me at any time. I've got a, even if it's just one day, I don't pay them people by the job. They got to get paid by the hour, and then when they get done with it, I pay them. Right. Um, that's just what we've agreed on. But yeah, those those folks there call me any you know any hour. Um, it was a pretty short co phone conversation is the only reason I asked. Mm -hmm. Kind of unusual to get a 13 second phone conversation at midnight. 13 you know, it seconds? Is for me. It may not be for you. But, All right. Um, well, just, we'll, just we'll check, check it out. out. Yeah, we'll check, check it out in detail. That's right. Um, so, Saturday morning, you wake up sometime between 6 and 7. Uh, I think we decided that Danny Singleton, is that his name? Mm -hmm. uh, a guy that works for you, was calling you. Uh, and called you pretty frequently. You said you sometimes you give him and send him to work on Saturdays, yeah. and that may have been why he was calling you. Oh, shifting around there. Danny Singleton was actually arrested in 2015 and charged with 38 counts of perjury for lying about his whereabouts that very night. So he was charged. He was sentenced to I think it was two years or something in in. Um, jail and he he was in for eight months and then released on two months probation so that's that for danny singleton but that was the first arrest ever made in this case so when he brings up danny singleton here he does look a little more uncomfortable huh because danny said that he was out he was at a bar and the witness said no he was at home so then he had he admitted he also failed a lie detector test and he admitted that he lied at a grand jury indictment so 38 counts of perjury there and the speculation is that Danny Singleton may have placed Crystal's car where it was found. 
because it was in the same time frame that Crystal's car, based on all the tips received, arrived there. That sort of time frame they narrowed down, uh, which was already, by the way, we looked at it yesterday, um, between, it was already from around 10.30ish p.m., between 10.30 and 11.30, something like that, which is obviously, <laughs> it makes no sense with this timeline that Brooks Hauck is giving. But sometime then, the car may have been placed there. That's the same time that he lied about his whereabouts. Okay. So did you go do some work Saturday morning before you went to your mom's house? Before you went to the farm? Or what did you Saturday do Saturday morning? morning? No, I didn't. Um, I didn't do any other uh, any other work on Saturday morning. That's where I went. I went out there to the farm. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly what time I got out there, but that's what I um, that's what I had done. Mm -hmm. So, so you get up between six and seven, and where's Eli at when you wake up? He's next to me. He's in the bed with you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so you get up. Does he get up with you? He's still uh, he's still asleep. So whenever so I whenever I get up, but I go to. Uh, you know the bathroom and all that kind of stuff and he's still sleeping uh, sleeping there on the bed mm -hmm. sleeping there on the bed okay two and a half years old so he's there in the bed no talk of crystal you know he just gets up changes his clothes which someone pointed out earlier there didn't say I put clothes on or something I, I changed my clothes okay uh, thank you Daniel, for your uh, sticker there, really appreciate it. Also, um, I hope that you guys will check out the presentation from the first live stream because we went over, I even showed you pictures and everything of Danny Singleton and just all the, the whole timeline is there in the first episode. Um, so you can check that out, even if you just want a refresher, the timestamps are there for you as well. Okay, so continuing on here. And so when you wake up, he's there, but Crystal's not. She's not. Okay. And so did you... Um, did you try to call her or? Yes, I noticed. I mean, I noticed that she wasn't there. I didn't know what was. I didn't know exactly what to think. I don't know what time I called her. Yes, I called her that morning. I mean, did you call her before you left the house to go to the? I don't farm? remember what time I. I don't remember what time I called her. But do you remember where you were at? Were you at home or were you at the farm? Or you were on the way to the farm? I don't know. Uh, somewhere in between. I don't. I don't recall. I don't. Okay. I don't know. That's fair enough. So you, uh, before you go to the farm, you feed Eli breakfast. Uh, I, I, I did not before we, uh, before we got there. I normally get those like those squeezable um, yogurts, all them vitamins and minerals and stuff in it, mm -hmm. and he likes to eat stuff like that for breakfast. And it's easy; he can do that in his car seat or whatever he's got to do. Okay. Oh man. <laughs> Otherwise, like, he can do that in his car seat or whatever he's got to do. <laughs> oh, my word. She was like, yeah, give him one of those squeezable yogurts, you know, with all the vitamins and minerals in. Yeah, he can just do whatever he's got to do in his car seat. Okay, well, now you're confirming that he had it in the car seat? Because you were just not able to answer where he had breakfast. Wow. Okay. So you, you think he was eating on the way to the farm? I don't think he was. I know he was. Okay. okay. Um, now, how much of the yogurt he I, ate, I, I don't know. I'm not worried about that. I'm not, it's not a question of what he ate or how much he ate. It's, I'm just trying to establish. Well, he's a healthy boy. I had a of behavior from, right. from that weekend, you know. Um, and here's why. I'll be honest with you. I'm, I have been all along. We'll continue to be. If I woke up on a Saturday morning and my wife wasn't with me in the bed, as is normal, um, which might not be normal for you, I don't know, but for me, it would be normal, particularly if my wife's a late sleeper, which mine is, is as well on Saturdays, for her to be there in the bed when I get up. So if, if she were not, probably the first thing I would do would be to call her to find out where she was. But what you're, what you're not aware, what you're missing is a lot of times that her and Brooke, or sister, or Sabrina, a lot of these girls that they do all these, uh, they go out and do stuff. Sometimes they do these, uh, this is going to be embarrassing for me to talk to you. Okay, watch this deflection now. We literally go from talking 
about the baby's breakfast. <laughs> and he's like, he's a healthy boy. He's like, okay, that wasn't the question. Now, after saying the crystal was up when he went to bed, so was Eli. Krishy was up playing games on her phone, didn't see you when she came to bed, didn't see you in the morning, also wasn't concerned, didn't call anybody. Now he's going to make up a new story where he says that Crystal and her sister and some friends go to these like fantasy parties. And sometimes they go out all night. So now he's implying that she was out partying all night. So now you're saying she like left the house or what? Let's have a listen. Yeah, but I'm wanting to get everything cleared up as quickly as I can. They do these uh, fantasy parties mm -hmm. all these girls get together they talk about and do whatever and it's not uncommon for them when they go out and party they stay out the better part of the night mm -hmm. if not the whole night so um and of course i always have the children you know during that they don't take the kids to that As a matter of fact i take care of some of their other children while they're the ones going it's not uncommon this guy is the dad of the community while all the mothers are going out there to fantasy nights, he's looking after the children, even some other people's children, okay? This guy, the early sleeper who dishes out squeezable yogurt <laughs> for breakfast and just like, you could do what you gotta do in that car seat. Yeah, this guy. Looking after the kids, looking after other people's kids. While all the ladies are partying it up at fantasy night. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Because they know I don't get into all that stuff and they know that uh, I'm a man, don't get me wrong. Understand that, a white-blooded American male. And there's no... We might call a baby boy over here now. You went straight to your mama's house on Friday night and on Saturday. Oh, this guy. Oh my, he's like, I'm a man. <laughs> okay, again. Sir? No, no one asked you. No one asked. <laughs> Since I'm not telling anything different, but they they do all these parties and order all this stuff. Well, who gets the kids? I'm good enough to get the kids for all this, and I'm a good enough person to do that. And then when everybody sees a little bit of distress, they're going to throw me under the bus. You know, they need to re-examine all these other actions. How you know? And I can understand the family. Oh, <laughs> oh, okay. So. He's saying that he's this really good guy. He's a man. And he looks after kids. He's a man and a babysitter for all the other kids, okay? While all these women are out there gallivanting, having fun, going to fantasy parties, and the minute that there's a little bit of distress, they just throw him, in, him under the bus. Just throw him under the bus. <laughs> Again, now he's a victim. But he's a victim of fantasy parties and being forced to babysit. Okay. <laughs> Wildfire's laughing at white-blooded American man. <laughs> wanting to vent and stress, mm -hmm. and it makes perfect sense to me, but these people know me better than what's going on, and before this is all over and done with, you all are too, but it really, it bothers me because not only have I been a victim? I can't even, my mind's not even where it should be because I'm trying to protect Eli from this. Literally, you said it. Not only have I been a victim. A victim of what? A victim of, sorry, but what? Okay. Yes, and I'm trying to, he's the most important person that I'm trying to protect. I don't care about them dragging my name through the mud right now because I'm going to keep the main focus and emphasis on bringing her back uh, safely and as quickly as possible but it really it really bothers me what's being done in the method that everybody's pursuing and doing because what's going to happen is I don't want their apology I don't want nothing from them but then after this is all said and done they're going to sweep it under the rug and then it's going to it, they're just going to forget about what they've done to me in the process. Mm -hmm. What I've got to be faced with now is as good a mother as Crystal's been. Now, nobody's going to love you like a mother. Again, past tense. Past tense. As good of a mother as Crystal's been. Okay.
atmosphere. Now Eli is in an atmosphere where I've got all the hope in the world, but now I'm a, I'm a single parent, it appears to me, where she's been there 100% of the time for him to raise and rear him where I know that he didn't have to go to a daycare or a babysitter and I know that his mother is going to take care of him and now where, where am I at with without that love and support from her? Mm -hmm. Now I've got a little boy who's two. I thought you said he was almost three. When the detective said two, two and a half, he's like, no, 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 almost three. Now he's like, now he's two. Okay. And you're a victim and everyone must feel sorry for you because now you're a single parent. I mean, another red flag. He's like, I have all the hope in the world, but I'm a single parent now. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that just ruined the sentence before of all the, all the hope in the world. I mean, at this point, Crystal was just a missing person. And he's already talking about, oh man, I want to be a single dad. But also, Crystal had five kids. And he's only focusing, of course, on his own son. But what about all the kids? And what about all the kids that he babysits, huh? <laughs> Wow. Who's going to grow up his life if something's not done where she's not brought back safely. Now one of the very most important people in his life, he's got to grow up without. Right. You see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And I'm in here answering a bunch of bullshit that I'm doing the best that I can possibly do with, but it's taking a lot of energy and effort away from the other efforts that could be out there trying to help and bring her back here safely. I can't even go out with Okay, don't worry, dude. They're all out there searching. In, in Crystal's entire family was out there searching. He didn't help once. He said he didn't feel welcome, okay? He just didn't feel welcome. Didn't help. He also said he, all his searches are behind the scenes with the police. All right. But here he's saying, now I'm sitting here answering a bunch of bullshit while the focus should be. The focus is. It's happening simultaneously. This guy reading his one book. You can only think that, you see, he thinks he's so important that now that he's in the room here, he thinks that everything is centered on him. That's how it feels. But no, there's a whole investigation and a search already happening out there. Out there. Okay. Serafina, I missed your question. If you want to ask it again, I don't know, maybe someone knows. Yeah, he never searched. So this guy is being like, we got to focus on searching for her and bringing her home safely. Otherwise, I'm a single parent now. Like, oh my word. And yet, he never once searched. Wow. Okay. Side of the road without looking like a murderer or something like that. It's wrong. I've been extremely honest with you all. And now I'm up here doing all they can have the house. Y'all take anything that you want. You don't need any of that paperwork or search warrants. And now I'm up here trying to get my head where I can be on the side of being able to protect myself and defend myself for my son whenever I Oh, you're feeling threatened now. Notice says so where was she Friday night feeding cows or none of it makes sense then it still doesn't it still doesn't. We don't know exactly. We can speculate, but we don't know exactly. They've never found her remains, sadly. Eight years later, finally arrest two arrests. But can you believe what this guy is saying? And that he says because her car was found abandoned like that with her phone and keys and a purse inside, now it's looking like a murder. I mean, sure, taking a leap there for a missing persons case, dude. And not sounding concerned, just stating, you know, stating it very matter of fact. It's like murder now. And yet I'm just trying to protect myself because we should focus, okay? We should focus on myself and uh, me being a dad. Like... Wow. Okay. I'm the one that's I feel like has has the largest loss. Yeah. So well, I mean, do what you got to do. I'll I'll do whatever I can. But this is this is starting to get silly. I don't need an attorney. I haven't asked for an attorney. I don't need none of that. I'm innocent. I'm willing to talk to whoever. But this this, this to me is really starting to get it's starting to get silly because I feel like silly. Thanks. I don't have a Facebook page. I don't have time to get on the internet. I don't know a lot about computers. Crystal did all that for me. I didn't have to do it because that's something else that she always took care of. So now I have people come back to me telling me that they're completely trashing me online for the whole media. 
you know, I've taken 17 years of my life, and I feel like I've gotten worked hard to get a good education. I've worked hard all these years. I've built a nice life for me and my family, and now my whole family's name is is trashed for some. I just got to pause it there. My goodness. Uh, Copper Horse, uh, you said to her, Serafina's question was, is this the same case that they found a DNA match to three previous SA attacks? Yeah, that's Suzanne Morphew's case, I think, that you're referring to. And that was quite uh, speculative as well. Yes, so that was Suzanne Morphew's case. This is Crystal Rogers' case. Uh, she went missing on July 3rd of 2015. This was the guy that I was last known to see her alive. We're watching his interview with the police just uh, five days later and he's already playing the victim and he was arrested eight years after she disappeared and charged with murder with her murder and tampering with evidence so what a massive investigation that has been right okay continue on something that's completely not even tied to me that's where I'm at right now so I'm extremely upset I've heard over it I try to put on a tough shell on a bubble and and move forward. Uh, it's extremely difficult uh, to get up in the morning and push on and look at Eli and know that here I, I've got a million things going on that I have to get done and then who's going to suffer? He is and it's not right. I'm ready to, I'm ready to hire up. He really has that tunnel vision huh? Who's going to suffer? Eli is. Okay, and Crystal's other four children and her mom and her dad and her sisters and her brother and her entire family, the entire community. This guy is just like so tunnel vision. Our auctioneer to sell all this stuff so I can, so I can be there for him like Crystal. You, you, you want to get an auctioneer to sell all this stuff already on July 8th, five days later, guys. He's like, I want to get an auctioneer to sell all this stuff so I can look after him. Why? You've got three fully fledged businesses. You doing some, <laughs> you're stealing roofing shingles. You, why? Why do you need to sell all this stuff? And did he sell any stuff? I wonder. Oh my word. Here comes, <laughs> I, I told you guys, we're going to see him pretend to cry. Okay. It's getting very emotional now. What else do you want to know? Take me, it's all right. <laughs> no, it's... It's fine to be upset, I understand. It's fine to be mad. I understand that too. Yeah. He's there asking, asking for everybody. This is shock to him. It's okay to be upset by it, I understand. It's okay to be... I like our detective <laughs> John Snow talks to him. It's okay. Don't worry, little buddy. It's going to be all right type of thing, you know? And he's like, yeah, I don't know. I'm the victim in all of this. Yeah, but their, their emotions are so shy right now. And I can understand it. And I don't, if that's how they want to be in. But you're allowed to be emotional too. So that's, okay. that's fine. And what did she say to you about her future plans at that time? Um, she was planning on starting a new job and moving out and leaving the... I'm just going to play you a little clip here from this interview with Megan Kelly. Um, I know sometimes that brings up debates, you know, same as Nancy Grace, you like, you don't like or whatever. We're not here for that. We listen to the information, the facts, okay? So listen uh, to this. Uh, this is Crystal's sister saying, I'm just putting some clips in between, remember, to make sure you guys are awake, you're focused, you're concentrating. We'll go back to the crying in a moment. Just listen to some of these things that the family said, okay? father of her child whose name is Brooks yes she was so she was gonna leave him she was gonna leave him and she told you that yes and you had seen Sherry some problems between Brooks and Crystal's oldest child right yes ma'am what had happened um, her oldest child had went over there for a little while and he was trying to get a phone from her and in the meantime in the process he twisted her wrist and sprained her wrist okay was there abuse in their marriage one time he, they had went to, they had some guns where they had shot like turkey, how you shoot those clay pigeons, and he switched her shell out with a turkey 
shell or something where it would kick real hard and it kicked her shoulder and it put a big bruise on her shoulder and she showed that to me and I was kind of upset about that mm -hmm. but other than that I, I, I didn't know anything person between those two physical abuse and I shouldn't say marriage right they weren't married no, they were living weren't. together yes, um, but he was her boyfriend so what happened the day she went missing the day that she went missing her daughter had called me like the night before it texted me and wanted some clothes but she couldn't get her mom so I texted my daughter and I told her I said you know Kylie's looking for you um, you need to call her and I didn't think anything about it. And then later that night, her daughter texted me back and she still hadn't gotten in touch with her mom. So I started making phone calls then. And then that was Saturday, Sunday morning. No one I talked to had talked to my daughter and she still hadn't called me back. And the night before I thought maybe she's at a party and she don't hear her phone. But when Sunday morning came and she didn't call me, you knew. then I panicked. Yeah. And you saw Brooks, the father of Crystal's two-year-old, driving the next morning, right, with the two-year-old in, in, in the car. Um, I mean, you guys, yes, the family actually ran into Brooks' house that morning. I don't know if he planned for that, right? Why did you think that that was notable, Brooke? Um, because if Crystal didn't have him, I did. He heard the baby. Yes, he had the baby. So when he had the baby, red flags went up with me because if she wouldn't have left him. He says, Brooks, the, the boyfriend, he says we had a small fight. Uh, she went out with friends. I didn't think anything of it because she often stayed overnight with friends. I mean, but she didn't. That's I, not true. No. I saw Brooks that morning when I went to the police department to report my daughter missing. And he, I passed him, so I got him to pull over, and he did pull over, and I went to his truck. I should think that morning was July 5th when they reported Crystal missing, so it was the Sunday, right? And I asked him, I said, have you seen Crystal? And he said, no. And I said, well, did y'all have a fight or something? And he said, no, we had a little spat. He said, um, she kind of thinks I treated the other kids different than their baby they shared together. Mm -hmm. He said, and I can see where she gets that. And I said, but you haven't seen her or anything? And he said, no. And as he was talking to me, the baby popped his little head around the back seat and smiled at me. And when I saw that baby in that truck, I knew. I'm like, she would never leave that baby. Never. Mm -hmm. You're mad about is the darn set. And we're back to the interview. So there you heard it. She doesn't, she, Crystal didn't just up and leave and stay with friends or a cousin or anything. She didn't do that usually. And she would never have left Eli. Or never have just like not gotten back to her kids either or anything like that. So, sure. Phone that I took away from Ashley because her mother told for me to take it away from her. That's what they're mad about. And it's just been a spiral since then in October. And ever since then, their attitude towards me and everything is so wrong for punishing a 16 year old girl when she's not hurt, she's not hit, nothing like that. And I'm the worst person in the world. CPS was called because you twisted her arm, you sprained her arm. Crystal's oldest daughter, Kylie, you know, it was her phone. She had a phone. And this guy decided for some, I don't know what the fight was about or, you know, what happened there. But he grabbed the phone out of her hand so hard that he, he twisted her arm. So that's what he's talking about now. Like, oh, no, they made me out to be the worst person in the world. Well, she wasn't hit or nothing like, oh, dear, you're talking like a real TV aggressor there. Um, for having any, and I understand I'm not To clarify, we don't know anything like that about him yet. <laughs> and he's innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. That I'm not a disciplinary figure. When she disobeyed her mother, I followed a direct order from her mother. Mother couldn't get it from her. I took her cell phone from her. And then it's just been hell ever since. That was the whole thing about the wrist? Yes. I have to pause every now and then, guys. We've got to break it down. He followed a direct order from Crystal to do that to her daughter. Li lies. 
Oh, man. I hate it. I hate it. This is, I mean, he barely talks about Crystal in this interview. And the times that he does talk about her, she's going to fantasy parties all night. And then he talks later about, like, her being a social drinker. Here he's talking about her giving him a direct order to discipline her daughter. What? Oh, no, 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 no. Exactly. Yeah, they took her up to the hospital and did the same with CPS and all this bunch of garbage. They ruled it unsubstantiated or however they wanted to say it. No, no bearing or whatever. When you pull the reports, they documented it all. You can get all that stuff too. You want some water? No, I'm good. I'm, let's move forward. Whatever you need, I'm here to give to you. Okay. I'm innocent. I don't need an attorney, so I'm, I'm good. Well, ask whatever you want to ask. Okay. Well, if we can just continue with the conversation, and I don't want to rush you. Take your time. Um, we, I think we left off around about. Uh, Saturday morning, so you guys got up, and she wasn't there, so you and Eli got ready and went to the farm. Did you go anywhere else before you went to the farm? I didn't stop at McDonald's or nothing to get any kind of breakfast because he had that yogurt, that squeezable mm -hmm. yeah. breakfast, whatever, I don't know, whatever, someone steal the refrigerator if you want one. That's okay. That's fine. So you went to the farm, and was your mom there Saturday? Do you remember? I don't. Think, I didn't stop at the house up there either that that morning. What What do you do with Eli while you're working on the equipment? Wow. So Friday night, you know, between eight and midnight, he thinks his mom might have been mowing the the grass, but he's not too sure. But he didn't really stop at the house then. And then on the Saturday as well, July fourth. Now, now he's apparently with. Well, I think he was right with. Two and a half year old Eli, and did you hear it talks about the breakfast there now? Oh, just giving him that you want to see it, it's still in the fridge, you can look at it. I mean, it's not about the yogurt, dude. It's not about the yogurt. Oh, he keeps on going back to that. He's like, <laughs> need, needing to confirm. He's like, we didn't stop for breakfast or anything. Well, yeah, okay, he's only two and a half years old, but what did you eat? When did this guy ever eat? I'm just saying, like, in this whole story, now he's back on the farm doing a whole bunch of farm work, even though he's not a farmer, and his mother's farm has dedicated people on there, you know, work in the farm. But there he is again. He's out there again on Saturday morning, bright and early with Eli. No concern for West Crystal and doesn't call her before noonish. I'm, I'm usually not one that works on works on the equipment. Sometimes I might drive some of it. But yeah, if I get on that little tractor, he rides, he rides in my lap. You know, but I'm saying you, you said you worked on the driveway. Did you catch it? Did you catch it? He said sometimes he drives that equipment earlier. He said he never drives the equipment. Remember? So he said on the Friday he got there and jumped on a tractor. Then after that he said he never drives the equipment. Now he's back at the farm and just driving the equipment. Just a little bit of uh, driving that equipment. And I'm like, oh my word. Could you stick to any story? Oh my word. I mean, he's even offering the detective. Do you want some? You want to see the, you want to see the go-gurt? Wow. Okay. Carrying on. On the drive in front of the barn there. So yeah, but no, he's got five or six tricycles and big wheels and stuff like that. He plays on. And, and don't this this isn't them. about your parenting skills. Don't misunderstand. I understand. Yeah, but I'm, I'm not asking you about that. But what, if you're working on the dozer. Is Eli in the dozer with you, or is he out playing in the yard? Or? I'm not really. I'm not really working on the dozer. He's he's got five or six of the um, tricycles and uh, big wheels things that are at the barn. Mm -hmm. And if he's not out there with the cows or something, he rides them little toys around. We got got them down there in the barn. We got them out there in the driveway. It don't take a lot to entertain him. A lot of times he pedals or does whatever he does. Sure. But you but how long would you would you think that it took you to fix that area? And you said it was taking on water there in front of the barn with the with the dog. No, I don't I don't know. I, a lot of times on Saturday, I just use that as a as a place to uh, to vent and get away from what I call the the city, not just like Bardstown, the city, but all the right. city stuff that goes on. Oh, you go there to vent, to get away from all the things that go on in the city, even though it's like a uh, 15 to 20 minute drive. It's not that far. <laughs> He's like, I go out there to vent, get away from all those things, you know, happening. What things? 
and a two and a half year old with five or six tricycles? Guys, I don't have kids. Does that sound right to you? I'm just like, it doesn't sound safe that he's just running around the farm, getting on big wheels and five or six tricycles. He's sounding a little unsupervised there, according to this story. You know what I mean? Sure. Of music and all that. Out there, you hear crickets. Yeah. And, you know, you don't hear a lot of people. So I go out there to kind of, a lot of times just to get away from the stress of all these tenants and stuff calling these new construction contractors and stuff it's a it's a kind of a little vacation away from home right but you you told me earlier that on saturday you fixed the spot in front of the barn mm -hmm. where the water was going in yeah if you if the water's not if, the, if, if it's not been like raining a solid leak or whatever you can't really tell if it hits and misses sometimes if we get a substantial amount of rain um you can you can kind of tell where problems are like mm -hmm. You know, and, um... Yes, Carol. <laughs> You're like, what city does he live in? Look pretty rural to me. In Bardstown, Kentucky. Yes. That's where he stays. And the population is around 13,000. I think we looked at yesterday. But he's like, I just got to get away on a mini vacation. Really? On a Friday. When you're an early sleeper, you have to get away from 8 to 12 in the pouring rain, feeding cows, you know, <laughs> doing something at the burn pit. Okay, and then the next morning you go out there again because you just need another little mini vacation. What? Oh my goodness, this guy is very sus. And I could tell, so that you know that's, that's just what I did. Just right. piddle, just nothing important, just piddle. Right. But would you would Eli normally be in the in the bulldozer with you while you're operating it? Was he in there? He's, been, like, he, he, he's drove it, not that more there he wasn't. But yeah, I mean, he has been and he's drove the bulldozer before. He's drove all the tractors out there before. Okay. So that morning... A two and a half year old has uh, driven a bulldozer before and all the tractors out there before. Oh my word. I mean, he goes from tricycles to big wheels. Now, now the two and a half year old son, his son is... Um, He's, he's driving around on bulldozers and tractors, but he makes like he's, yeah, he's driving out there with him. <laughs> he's a healthy boy. Like, oh, okay. I don't know if, uh, how much time Brooks really spent with him. Maybe his mom helped look after him when he went out there. I don't know. You know, do you say mom was or wasn't home? Do you know? You don't know. I don't remember. You don't know. Okay. Um, so you don't know that she did, she, he was out riding on his tricycles or whatever. When you said in the driveway, you mean the driveway for the house or the driveway on, where that you're working Say it again on? Now. You said you were working on the driveway in front of the barn with the dozer, right? Yeah, from uh, down there by And you said he was probably riding on tricycles or something. Yeah, he. I'm sure he's running on the on the concrete slab. It's easier for him to pedal on the slab than it is outside there, and that and I can see him better. My visibility's better. If he's if he's in there, then out here. Right. So he was here by the barn and not over by the house in the drive. No, he wasn't by the house. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So you guys finish up whatever you're going to do. Maybe later that day. later that day or something, he might have went over there. The chickens might have come down there. He might have done something with them. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not uncommon for him to, you know, the chickens out there they can be. Just remember, a few minutes ago, he was extremely concerned about protecting Eli, and that now. This guy, he's like, I'm going to be a single, I am. He said, I am a single parent, okay? There he speaks in present tense. I am a single parent, and all I care about is protecting Eli. But here, it's like, oh yeah, we, we went to the farm the next day. No sign of Crystal, but we went to the farm July 4th, okay? We're there early. I don't know, he's the two and a half year old, my son. Eating his go -gurts in his car seat. I mean, the way he talks about it. Then he's like, now he's on his tricycles or whatever. He's been on tractors and dozers before, and he has no idea if his son wandered up maybe to the house or really where he was for that time. I mean, that's that's so crazy on my word. Um, Mia said, I love how he picks and chooses exactly what he does and doesn't remember. Right? Yep. <laughs> Very selective memory there. <laughs> and happy Grizzlyversary. Fast, but they're not scared of people because he plays with them so much. But you can catch them pretty easy. I mean, he treats them like a cat. Mm -hmm. So you guys, um, any idea how long you were out there? 
Saturday. It was a good, yeah, usually on Saturday I'm not in any kind of a rush because I try to take, uh, uh, I usually try to take it easy on Saturday. Okay. So did That was an odd little pause. Hmm? Yeah, he wasn't, I think he realized what he said there. He's like, usually on Saturday I'm not in a rush. Oh, but were you in a rush on Friday? Were you in a bit of a rush? What were you doing? What were you rushing? Interesting. And now on Saturday, oh, takes it easy. Did you did you eat lunch out there? I don't know if I ate lunch there. I know I ate supper out there at uh, at Fagan's house that night because he had everybody over there at his house for there's about I don't know maybe 150 people over there at my mom's brother's house. Mm -hmm. um, we went out there for for a short while. It wasn't real long. Um, I know I ate there. Eli ate there. I don't know what we did for much. I can't remember. Okay. Did you go from the farm to Fabian's, or did I, I, I don't know if I took a. Sh I may have went home and taken a shower. From being out there on the farm, you know, I don't want to go there smell like a bunch of cows. Sure. I, I may have went home, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know. I may have went home and took a shower and then came back. That's more than likely what I did, but I can't, I can't remember. Okay. So then you, sometime Saturday evening, you went over to Fabian's house. Do you remember around about what time that was? That would have been 4th of July. Yeah, so, that's, and that's when we were supposed to go to that. Mm -hmm. Did you all stay out there for fireworks? or We didn't stay that, that late. Uh, I know that I, there was a bunch of people there that I hadn't seen in a good while. That my mom's got a pretty large family um, that I hadn't seen and I wanted to see, uh, see them. But um, we didn't stay out there, out there real late. Um, Later, I have a clip from when he was interviewed on HLN by Nancy Grace. And there he talks about, yeah, I went to my mom's house for the 4th of July, you know, celebrating out there. I think that's what I remember him saying this. And here he's just like, mm, I don't know. Doesn't know what he ate for breakfast. Doesn't know what he had for lunch. Doesn't even know where he was, but just know it was only four days ago before this interview. And as a white blooded American, he said he was American man. Okay. Yep. You're not celebrating the 4th of July with your family? You're not with, you're on the farm. <laughs> so what are you doing? No, no, no. Went home, what, did you go home early? You didn't celebrate? Did you, yeah, I remember some people out there. I mean, it really just doesn't sound like he was out there on that day, but we'll see. Do you, any idea how many times you've called Crystal at this point? By the time you went from getting up Saturday morning until you were going to the family? I know I, 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 know I called her back around maybe noon again the second time and um, I don't know what the exact time I called her after that but I know that sometimes in the past if I called her and blow her phone up it made it worse mm -hmm. so oh really flipping the script is what we call that for a speculative coercive controller based on what we've heard about him right oh it made it worse when you called her even though the situation presented is that she's missing and a day later uh, on the july 5th her car would be found abandoned but you're saying well if i call her usually it made it worse i mean this guy victim blames like none other right if you just add up all the things he's saying about crystal and never saying her name doesn't want to say her name, doesn't want to talk about her, but saying she went out all night. Firstly, she was playing games on her phone and just up late. Then the next story was she sometimes goes out all night to these fantasy parties. Then it was about uh, Crystal giving him direct orders to discipline her eldest daughter, which ended up in him spraining her wrist and CPS was called. And now... He's talking about, no, 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 sometimes I just got to give her space because if I call, it just makes it much worse. I mean, makes what much worse? Why are you making her sound like an aggressor the whole time? Like, oh, my word. Sometimes I've just called 
periodically, and I found that to she doesn't take as much offense to that. You know, if you're just disrespectful to them, especially if somebody's mad, it just makes it worse to right. keep calling them, calling them, calling them. I wasn't, I wasn't even alarmed. I was for sure the girls. Why, why weren't you alarmed? Because you literally said that Crystal took care of him 100% of the time. Okay, besides the babysitting that he pretends to do when there's all these fantasy parties going on. <laughs> okay, put that aside. He said he was doing his little crocodile tears thing when he was thinking of himself as a single parent because now who's going to take care of Eli? Now he has to. And she's like the mom. She takes care of Eli. But yet when she's nowhere to be seen and she's never left Eli... She would always take the baby with her. That's also what her sister said. Eli was either with her or with her sister. That's it. Not with Brooks. Okay. And on this day, he's not even concerned, even though he's got so much to do. Remember, he's got no time unaccounted for. Very busy schedule. Although he's talking about this being now a mini vacation out there at the farm and not a big schedule. Just the next day, right? Okay. On the 4th of July, you're not worried about who's going to take care of Eli? You're not worried about where is the mother of your child. I mean, it makes no sense. We're doing this to me on purpose. Brooke and Sabrina and them. So while you're at the family gathering uh, at Fabian's house, anybody ask you where Crystal was? Mm -hmm. She hadn't went out there to uh, Fabian's house a whole lot. Some of them people knew her, some of them people out there wouldn't have known her, but... Um, Right then, they, I don't Not really a big deal for them. No, it, it, it's something that those people there we see once ever, sometimes every few years. So a lot of them people really hadn't. Some of them have seen her, and a lot of them have not seen her. Mm -hmm. You know, haven't met her. Sure. So I like said it was a substantial. That was a very nice, vague answer. <laughs> some have seen her, some haven't seen her, some know her, some don't. So, shrug. Amount of people. You're out there. You said you. Uh, did you say you didn't stay for fireworks? No, we didn't stay that late. So you and Eli leave before dark. Mm -hmm. Because that's usually when people set off fireworks in, in, on 4th of July. Uh, and do you, you go home, you go to somebody else's house? And that was on Saturday? Yeah, that was Saturday. Do you go to Mom's? Where, where do you go after you leave there? I can't help but think of Chanda Holderson in this situation, because remember... How he answered about also the 4th of July, wasn't it as well? Right? And he's like, hmm, was that on Saturday? What do we do? I think we watched the fireworks. Now here he's like, mm-mm, didn't. You didn't? Okay. No, I think we rode, I think we rode with, uh, we rode with my mother over there. To Fabian's house? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we rode with her and then I, then I went home. Wow, he just remembered, oh yeah, I was talking about not being at the house, like my mother's house. Yeah, I wasn't really there. I was there on the farm in the morning, but just, you know, getting away from the city to listen to crickets and be around the cows some more. Also, while my two and a half year old son is just riding around on tractors because he does that. He's ridden dozers. He's a healthy boy. He ate his go-gurt. Okay. So, oh yeah, I do remember now. My mom drove with us to whoever Fabian, Fabian's house for the 4th of July celebration. But then, you know, he was a good boy again. Brooks over here, he went to bed early. Didn't even see the fireworks. Doesn't complain about that noise either. <laughs> After that... So you rode back to mom's house with mm -hmm. her, and then you uh, you didn't stay at mom's. You went back to your house. Okay. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, I don't know the exact. I don't know the exact timing and all that right there. But I do know that I rode with uh, I rode with her over there to Fagan's house. Okay. And you left her house and went home. I don't know. I don't know if I stayed there any period of time or not. I may have stayed there just a little bit. I don't. You know he's lying when he says period of time. <laughs> I don't know if I stayed there for any period of time or not. <laughs> you don't know where you slept that night and where was Eli? I don't think very much, but I might have stayed there a little bit. I'm not sure. I mean, you didn't stay the night there. No, right? no. Uh -uh. Did you go anywhere else after you left mom's house before you went home? Not that I can remember. Okay. I think it would be a good idea for folks, 
is to put a darn camera. You think I'm joking? I'm being serious. You try to go back through this. Yeah. I need mean, to put a camera in your vehicle and up there in front of you, just live on tape, and then you. Well, I'm not. I'm not asking you to recall every detail of your life. Sure. Your recommendation is to ha for everyone to have a camera in their vehicle so that he doesn't have to answer all these questions. You know, just look at the cameras and then you'll know. Well, they did look at cameras. And when they said you got home on Friday around, you know, well, it was actually already clocking over to Saturday, 10 past midnight. He was like, all right, I don't think it was that late, but if it has to be. So when the cameras confirm sometimes, then he doesn't like that. But yet he's like, you know what? You know what? You should all just have cameras in the car so you could just watch everyone all the time. Sure. Bro. But I'm just trying to. But it would, it would help me if I could. Well, it, but listen, I, I couldn't tell you what I did two days ago. I couldn't tell you what I did before I started investigating this because I've been investigating this for three days. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm not asking you to remember every single minute. But you know, and and I realized that it wasn't a big deal for her to be gone for you. But you know, most people can remember, you know, most of the things they did during the day. Not every single minute, but. You remember going to Fabian's house. You remember mm -hmm. leaving Fabian's house to home. Yeah. That's right. And going, so if you went from mom's house to home, you'd eat dinner at and Fabian's. I, and I met, I don't know if it was uh, her mother. I met her mother at the gas station somewhere. One of them days. Mm -hmm. Her mother, Sherry, mm -hmm. Crystal's mother, Sherry, and I don't know if Ashley was with her and other kids were with them, but I stopped at right there in front of Walmart mm -hmm. where I, go, I get a bunch of fuel at up right there, that Murphy station across from Lowe's right there. Walmart, okay. It's got to be a Walmart. He stopped at the Walmart, and yes, we know that he saw Sherry, and it was actually um, Brooke, which is weird how he's like, I don't know. He's kind of saying which well, doesn't know which sister, but his name is Brooks Hauk, and Crystal's sister name is Brooke, so how can you not remember, you know, which sister you saw there <laughs> and who spotted you on Sunday, the 5th of July, at a gas station with Eli in the back of the car? Who knows where he was going, but yes. And I was on the phone with, with, uh, with either Ashley or Sherry, one, I forgot which, and they said... I tell you what I've done too. I talked to Brooke on the phone there you go. at the farm. I talked to Brooke. That would be so. Brooks Hawk spoke to Brooke, Crystal's sister, at the farm. Now he remembers, but also he never once is expressing that Eli is crying for his mom because at this point, obviously, he would be. I mean, that's very odd. That it's just like, oh, he's fine. He's had like one go go. He is good to go. Okay. Brooke, her younger sister, uh, before I left because I was heading into town to get fuel at that point. So whatever time that I talked to Brooke, you'll know that I left. Mm -hmm. So make a note of that. You so were, I, you talked were to, I talked to Brooke on the phone, and that's when I was leaving, leaving the farm on 49. And I drove in 49. And then I made a right there on 150 and went up there to Walmart. And then I got on the phone with Sherry or Ashley when I don't know whose phone they were on. Mm -hmm. But that'll help me right there because that's you can pinpoint an exact time. And then I pulled in there to uh, in there to that Murphy station. Mm -hmm. And then Sherry came up there to my window. Okay. And asked me uh, if if I'd seen Crystal. And this is this right here is after I have uh, I talked to Barbara Lane and I I sent her I called her a couple times. I think I got an answer. She's probably busy doing something. And then I sent her a text message. And after I kind of stayed on her, she knew that it was it was serious because it'd been longer than normal when she'd done this before in the past. And this was. Okay, so Crystal's family knew it was serious because it had been longer than normal, but he didn't. He didn't, and you're saying that Eli wasn't screaming for his mom at this point? <laughs> Dude. Saturday? I'm not sure. You'll have to. Oh, so much stuff happened all so quick. You'll just have to mm -hmm. dissect. That's the reason I've given you all my stuff. My sure, yeah, yeah. You can dissect all that and figure, you know, mm -hmm. get an exact time. So I called Barbara and I sent her a text message. I talked to her mother at Walmart, um, up at that Murphy gas station. 
I had Eli with me then, of course, had him with me all the time. And um, she wanted to look at Eli. She said, where is Eli? I said, right there. And then she spoke to him, and she looked at him and said hi. And he said hi, and that was it. So she just asked you where if you'd seen Cherry and you told her no. No, she didn't ask you if I saw it. Crystal, sorry. Crystal. Yeah, my name's confused. Um, so Sherry asked you. Finally, he said her name. Crystal. It's like the first time he said it in this whole freaking interview. Is that like Crystal? But did I just hear right that he's like, Sherry was there. She was at my window. She wouldn't even look at Eli. But then she asked where he is and I said he's right there. Then she looked at him and said hi and he said hi. Okay, so like the way he talks about his two and a half year old son is as if his two and a half year old is like 25, you know what I mean? It's just like he was like, hi, and she's like, hi, and that's it. Sure, that's shocking. If you she, because she was the only one, everybody else stayed in her vehicle, mm -hmm. uh, and then she walked over to my truck. And when you told her, what, I haven't seen her, don't know where she is, and she just said okay and asked me no about she thought that she thought that the wisest thing for us to do was she said she was going to go to the police station okay so and i told her that i think at that point i'd already talked and i've already talked to uh barbara i believe i'm not sure barbara lane and um if he thought she went to sabrina's he just said she did that shaky relationship but he told me they weren't fighting that night so why would he think she went to Sabrina's? I don't understand that. If they didn't get in a fight, then why, did, why would she have left to go? Did there? they have a shaky relationship that night and he thinks she went to Sabrina's? That's my question that I've been wanting to ask. Halk, according to the sheriff, has taken a lie detector test, which came back inconclusive. He resides at 113 Glenview Drive and was the last person seen with Rogers at the family farm on Friday, July the 3rd, according to a police investigation. I'm, I'm not sure how to the time periods. I don't know. I just don't know. That's fine. That's fine. So, um... Then I went home. So Saturday, you went home after, uh... The gas station. So you think that was... Um, okay, so you think the gas station was between leaving the farm and getting showered up before you go to Fabian? No, that's incorrect. Okay. Um. But which day? Because he's confusing the days a little bit, huh? How's the sound, guys? Sorry. Hold on. Sorry about that. Let's go back here. The sound was a bit loud and then I turned it down too much. Sorry, can you hear now? Here we go, here we go. There to that Murphy station. Mm -hmm. And then Sherry came up there to my window. Okay. And asked me uh, if, if I'd seen Crystal. And this is this right here is after I have, uh, I talked to Barbara Lane and I, I sent her, I called her a couple times, I think I got an answer. She's, probably busy doing something and then I sent her a text message and after I kind of stayed on her she knew that it was it was serious because it'd been longer than normal when she'd done this before in the past and this and was Saturday I'm not sure you'll have to all so much stuff happened all so quick you'll just have to mm -hmm. dice that's the reason I've given you all my stuff my sure, yeah, yeah. you can dissect all that and figure you know mm -hmm. get an exact time so I called Barbara and I sent her a text message. I talked to her mother at Walmart. Sorry, I went back a little bit. I just don't want to miss what we what we just saw. There we go. Okay, there we are. We're back. We're back. That's fine. That's fine. So um, then I went home. So Saturday you went home after uh, the gas station. So you think that was no, I'm, okay? So you think the gas station was between leaving the farm? and getting showered up before you go to Fabian's? No, that's incorrect. Okay. Uh, you, you said you yeah. were leaving to go get fuel. Yeah, I did leave the farm to go get fuel. I don't, I don't know, I don't know if that was Friday, I don't know if that was Saturday that I got fuel. I think it was Sunday.
I think it was Sunday, but anyway, he's <laughs> he's messing up his own little timeline here, even though he's so adamant that he's got everything there on those papers. I'm sure I did it with my card. I can prove what time that was. Mm -hmm. And she, See, so I talked to Sherry. Sherry. Do you think it was this? Do you think you talked to Sherry the same day they reported her missing? You said she said to tell yes, me. Yes, she said, yeah, okay. yes, she said. Yeah, yes. The day that, yes. That, so they, that's, they reported I her think missing she, on Sunday. Then it's, it was Sunday, I feel like, whenever... That's because Sherry told me she's going to the police station. Mm -hmm. Is Sherry the one that reported her missing? Mm -hmm. Sherry's. All right, what, I had a question from the media or from the news that I wanted to ask you all to think about. Who, that, you all said that a family member found her car. How does that happen? Rather than the police department that has large as this... Oh, now he's got questions. How did her car get found so quickly? Um, okay. He's like, how does that, I, I heard from the news, a family member found her car. How does that happen? Are you trying to imply that the family put the car there and they're the ones that found it? I mean, he's just building some speculation over there. He's like, hmm, interesting that her family found her car. <laughs> yeah, that's it's not working out. Um, and he's just like, wait, who reported Crystal missing? Yes, her mom, her dad, and her brother. Yes, indeed. And while they were there, then her ex-husband called them and said, Hey, I think I've spotted her car. I think I saw her car on Bluegrass Parkway at the mile marker 14. County is a family member. Well, that's a pretty big family. Uh, and as I understand it, someone called, someone who knew them called them and said, there's a car that looks like hers on the parkway. And they went out there. Who was the family member that found that car? My line, if you look at my notes. There were two of them. Am, am, I, able, am I able to know that oh, question, yeah. that answer? I, you who it was. I just had to look at my look back through my notes and see who it was. Can you believe this guy? Who was that family member? That sounds dangerous for those family members, right? It sounds scary now in the context. It's like, who were they, huh? Who discovered a car, huh? That was quick. Um, I and mean, I'm... That's not great either, but uh, I want to say that it was. Uh, I'm trying to think. There was. You can look back at them. I'm sure. It's I want to say it was a brother and nephew. I know we took elimination prints from one of them because they touched the car before we got there. So we took elimination prints from them, like we did from you, to rule out any prints that we mm -hmm. found in the cars being there, being that person. Alright. Uh, so I want to say that it was one of her brothers. How many she only had Casey's. Casey's. Brothers. So I want to say it was her brother and maybe her dad that went out there. But I, I think it was her brother that somebody actually called. But that, that may be incorrect. I'll have to look at the notes. All right. But so Saturday evening you went to Fabian's house. You had dinner. You went home. You're home all evening with Eli. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody no, come no. over? Anybody not? Uh, yeah, I feel like, yeah, Richie comes over to my house all the time. He's over uh, every day. Who's Richie? Richie Riggs. He's my manager, my real estate agent. He lives next oh. door at 115 Glenview Drive. He's one of the people on that list. Okay. Um, so you go to bed Saturday night. You got Eli with you. Presumably, because uh, you said you guys went home from Fabian's. Not or, presumably, he was or, with me. Right. Well, I didn't want to put words in your mouth, so if he's with you, tell me. He's, yeah, he's with me, yeah. He was uh, with me. Again, not trying to offend, yeah. I just don't want to put words in your mouth. Yeah, I don't uh, want you to either. So, so you and Eli go to bed. <laughs> Can you believe how he said that? He's like, I don't want to put words in your mouth. He's like, yeah, I don't want you to either. <laughs> Whoa. Saturday night, you get up. Normal time Sunday morning. Do y'all go to church? No, sorry. Okay. Didn't so, go to church. Um, but on Sunday, I don't remember what we did Sunday. Okay. See, that's where he busts himself because he said he left the farm to go get fuel, and that's where he ran into Sherry and Crystal's sister. Now, from their account of things, we know that that was Sunday, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, but that was on the 5th. So, that would mean he did stay over on Saturday night at his mother's house, if we had to calculate that whole 
timeline of his. And no wonder he's like, I don't remember. Like, he doesn't remember what happened on the 4th of July, what happened that evening. He doesn't remember really what Eli was doing. Can't even really remember what he ate or where he slept. Yeah, it makes sense now because you stayed at the farm. Which is what a lot of these um, accused and later, <laughs> if they're convicted, lots of patterns there where they, it's quite something, huh, where they go straight to their mom's house if something happens in the relationship. Well, I, I mean, I, I'm, I don't want to make Sunday it. Sunday when I went in. Is Sunday when I came up here and talked to you that night or Saturday night? Uh, that would have been Sunday night. Mm -hmm. Sorry, let me make sure he's giving me what I need here. Um, your phone's on my desk, that's what he was telling me. That's fine. Um, uh, hope you had fun answering it. <laughs> he probably didn't answer it. <laughs> um, yeah, Sunday night you came up here and talked to me. That was after they found the car and everything. So, so sometime Sunday after 12 o'clock is when you talk to Sherry uh, at the gas station. Uh, I think, uh, and I'd have to look at your phone to see, but it, and you may know or might know, but you called Barbara. You, you called her Barbara Lane. I just called her Barbara. That's all I've ever known her about. But Barbara Roby was a ballad, right? Yeah. Uh, you called her um, and talked to her about Crystal being gone, or she called you. No, I'm going to call her. Okay. Um, and what does that conversation sound like? Even that is very interesting. You know, he's not saying that Crystal tried to call him back or anything. He's not worried about that. And yes, apparently this whole time he's got Eli from Friday, the whole night Friday, you know, because they're getting home just after midnight, around midnight. Okay, so kind of Saturday morning, the whole time then, the whole of Saturday, Saturday night, now it's Sunday, like, oh my goodness. I'm telling you, man, he went straight to his mama's house, stayed there, and his mom helped look after Eli. Right? <laughs> Anonymous says, really thought he was being super slick in this interview, but your acting is bad, Brooksy, and we've all got your number. <laughs> and PT, thank you so much for spoiling Fury. I did buy him some new treats today as well, so thank you very much. I think the first time that I called her that... I don't think she answered the phone, so I left a message, and then I don't, I don't got a response, and then I sent a text message mm -hmm. to her, and that's when she called back, and I think she tried to call her, and she didn't get an answer. Okay. And you know. So, I, and I'm piecing things together from what they've told me as well. So, um, at some point, you do talk to her on the phone, but when you get up Sunday morning, and Crystal's still not home. Are you're starting to get concerned? That's why yes, you called Barbara. That, yes, exactly. And that's the reason that I did call her. But before then, I'm, I wasn't alarmed. She, she'd done this before, right? And I, I wasn't, I wasn't alarmed. That's all there is to it. Yeah. So you call Barbara. Um, He's like, I wasn't alarmed, and that's all there is to it. Yeah. Okay. I don't think that's all there is to it. I knew I gave Barbara Lane more credibility than Sabrina. Grew up or any of them, because I know them young girls. If Crystal tells them not to say nothing, you ain't gonna be able to beat it out of them. Right. And the, them girls are they're just the like, yes, they're just like Look. terrible choice of words, terrible slip there. If Crystal tells her sisters or her daughters to say nothing, he says you've got to just about beat it out of them. Okay. Especially to a guy, if they're fighting, they're not. And I'm smart enough to know that. But I knew Barbara would say, "Hey, she don't want to talk to you, or she's fine. Just leave her, give her some time." I knew Barbara wouldn't keep me. She's a mature woman. Do you understand the mm -hmm. difference in what I'm? So she would at least, I feel like, let me know, "Hey, where I wouldn't have to worry." Right. She might not give me no details or nothing, which is fine. But she would at least ease my ease my concern. And that's the reason I called her over sure. these other people because I, I knew I'd get further with her. And at some point, so you do talk to her, and as I understand it, at some point she came over to your house. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Do and you, she's been there a few times since then. Right, but that particular day she came over to your house, was that before or after you talked to Sherry? Do you remember? I had no idea. No, no, that's fine. Um, so you said... Hey, also, I don't even remember doing that. I don't even, I remember seeing her a bunch more this last little bit than I really ever had before, mm -hmm. but I don't, as far as talking to 
sherry at the gas station right. and then keeping everything secret, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. None. Okay. Well, I mean, I know that Sherry was here at 3 o'clock thereabouts filing the report, the missing persons report. So that part I can kind of figure out, okay, so it was sometime before 3 o'clock that you talked to her at the gas mm -hmm. stations. I'm thinking probably, you know, closer to that time than farther away, not early in the morning, what have you. Um, and then, of course, fast forward to they find the car at 5 o'clock. Uh, out on the parkway and the, the sergeant responds out there and then he calls me and then I come out and start investigating and um, obviously I call you to come and talk to me about the you know the last time that you saw Crystal um, so that kind of builds my timeline obviously there's some gaps in there understandably um, but you know some of those gaps become really important uh, you know for instance, validating or invalidating the guy's statement about her being on 49 between 1 and 2. You see what I'm saying? The gaps in time become really important to me because that's how I determine where my gaps in the investigations are and where I should focus my investigation. Uh, I've got guys out there that all i got to do is call them and say, hey, go check this out. But I have to have something for them to check out before I can call them and tell them. Um, couple things that we're going to, I want to get into that are going to be, you know, somewhat personal, okay, and it, it does, it's not intended to pry into your personal life, it's intended to pry into what's going on in Crystal's mind, okay. Uh, I'm trying to get a reference for her frame of mind for the past few days before she goes missing so that I can rule out any possibility of uh, intention to harm self or things of that nature, you understand? Um, and I, I don't know that I can rule that out, but what do you think about it? Do you think that she's, uh, that she has the potential to harm herself? I don't, I don't know, I don't know any of all that Crystal is not that kind of person. I don't believe at all. I don't think she, I don't feel that way at all. Mm -hmm. So you don't think she had any, any suicidal tendencies? No, whatsoever. sir. Never tried it in the past? No. Never come close to ODing on drugs in the past? No. When she would go out, did she drink much? She not a, a whole family drinks, but she drinks a lot. This guy, he's like, yeah, the whole family drinks, but uh, yeah, she's a social drinker. Interesting how he's almost defensive here. It's a bit, that's a bit odd, given the, the context, especially over time, right? Sure, okay. A little bit, not any. To the point where somebody has to bring her home and drop her on the front stoop? No, she ain't no drunk. Mm -hmm. Well, you said she goes, sometimes she goes out after and, you go to they, bed. They do drink and they need a driver, but they're not what you're describing is like a sloppy drunk. Just somebody got tore down. I mean, right. that's not what, that's that's not an accurate picture of her. Okay. I mean, she likes to out having a good time, but I mean, she's... I guess I don't want to say like a maybe conservative person, but sure. uh, just a normal typical social drinker. Yeah, a normal typical yeah. person likes to have a good time. I mean that, that's it. So if you had to guess, how often would you say she would go out? She doesn't go out real often. Not real often. I mean she's got all all those Apparently he would always check, you know, where she was, who she was with. He's he he may have been quite controlling so when he's like nope she didn't go out much <laughs> except i wonder in his mind how often he thinks these fantasy parties happened you know was it like one time or what are we talking about okay um so phantom says where are the kids at this time like right now in while this interview was happening i'm not too sure um, I'm not sure where Eli was. Um, the four kids of Crystal's at various ages between 10 and about 18 were probably with their dad, you know? So, but I'm not too sure. It was, uh, all her kids and we got Eli. I mean, we have a pretty busy, busy lifestyle and we've always, seems like we've always got kids here and there. So, I mean, right. we don't have a, a whole lot of time to do that. We don't like to get babysitters all the time you know sometimes if 
her parents have a couple of the kids or Keith might have a couple of them, we might go out with always usually, you know, with Eli, we don't usually sell him ever get a babysitter for him. Mm -hmm. um, and we take him with us, but other than other than that, um, well, I get I guess the reason I'm confused. Well, I thought he was the babysitter for the entire community, just about. That's how I made it sound earlier, remember? The reason about that is because you said it was not unusual for her to go out with the girls. It's not unusual. Yeah, so we're not, so help me understand. You mean but that's what once I a month or once every other month or, I mean, what, how much time are we talking about here? You know, because my wife might have a girl night a couple times a year. But she might not be the typical wife either. Yeah, I don't maybe know. Maybe about probably about two times every three months. Okay. Like once every six weeks or something like that. Sure. Okay. Um, you, so you said that Eli generally does not go to a babysitter. No, so he that, doesn't. I don't want him at a baby, and I certainly don't want him at somebody's house that smokes. Mm -hmm. I, I just don't. I don't want. To. I'd rather just keep him right with me, and I'd rather. Um, if we're going out doing something, I'd rather just take him right along, mm -hmm. you know, right along with Well, us. so that kind of brings me to one of my questions that I had. When we talked a little bit about the last time that we talked when we were at your house, and you kind of explained it, um, you know, and, and I get the fact that she would tell the kids, you know, hey, we got a babysitter for the night or for the evening, we're going to go out, mm -hmm. you know. I get that. You explained that, that the other kids kind of get jealous. If, and if you guys yes, we don't, we don't want to hurt their feelings. Sure, sure. Especially Kylie, the situation she's always wanted a I mean, any kid who wants a father figure in her life, she's really struggled in that area. And her mother doesn't want her to think that she's pushing one of the children out and then the other one can go with us. I mean, that's normal. I mean, in my opinion, sure. it is. And, and, I, and I get why she might tell Keith that because Keith has two of the kids. Mm -hmm. She doesn't want him to tell them differently than what she's told them. Um, are you familiar with a woman named Christina Holly? I know, yes, I know who you're talking okay. about. Uh, there are some text messages between her and Crystal on Friday, and she's asking Crystal if they want, if if she wants to go to um, Chuck E. Cheese, I think it was, uh, something something to do with the kids, do right. something with the kids, um, and she tells her the same thing. Well, I've got a, we've got a sitter for the evening. Uh, it's our first time being kid free for a while, so we don't want to. You know, uh, we're we're kid free. We're gonna enjoy ourselves. Right. Why would she lie to her about that? I don't know. I can't answer that question. Or her and how? Oh, he didn't expect that text to go out. It's like, no, I'm talking about Chuck E. Cheese, but we've got babysitters. You know, even that's interesting. Babysitters for the night. I wonder if Eli was supposed to go to the farm. You know what I mean? And. They were they were gonna, they were gonna have date night. That's what Crystal thought was gonna happen, date night. So uh, yeah, his story makes no sense. And there is a text message that she sent to a friend to say that's what was happening. And uh, Christina close. Yeah, I mean they've always been good friends. I know exactly who you're talking about. Do they? I mean the, close enough that they see each other on a regular basis every few days or no talk on say the phone every, or? they talk on the phone but I don't know if they see each other that uh, that often uh -huh. but uh, I think we were also supposed to maybe go to the zoo or something too she was going to take she's got a little girl that's really close to this matter born in the same month uh, month apart um, as she, Eli yeah as Eli mm -hmm. I mean, it's just curious to me. You know, these are the things that make me wonder. And, and, and any other... They make us all wonder, right? And Brooks Hawk is sitting there like, hmm? Sorry, what text now? Um, also, Chaos Theory is uh, answering the question about where are the kids maybe now. If you didn't mean now, like as in the time of the interview, where are they now? So um, two of the older girls are adults and two the other two kids are with their dad's mother. And Eli has been with the Hawks. Yes. Situation, they might not mount to nothing, but... Did you ever talk to the girl, the Amanda? Mm -hmm. All right, and so... she says there's, there was no plans for her to babysit. All right. Um, so, but that doesn't necessarily mean that Crystal hadn't planned for someone else to watch him. I don't know that. I mean, you know that, because you and Crystal have him together. 
And, but I don't know that because I don't know you guys. You know I don't know, saying? maybe sometimes, sometimes uh, she might use crystals. So I don't know if she, I don't know, I can't answer that. Right. I do not know the answer. Okay. But as far as you know, you all did not have plans for a babysitter that night. No, actually, no. The plan was all along for you guys to go to the farm? Yes. Okay, we've got about 25 minutes left of this uh, video clip that I put together for you. It includes a little bit at the end. I think it's about five minutes or so. Um, Dora says, was Crystal already dead? Did Brooke send out those texts with Crystal's phone? No, that was on Friday in the day when she had apparently sent out those texts to a friend, Christina. And she was uh, last seen at a Walmart on Friday afternoon by family. So there's that timeline that was uh, and she was also seen entering her home on Friday which if I remember correctly from my own presentation check out episode one it was around like five ish five p.m. ish something like that okay so continuing on all right okay if we get that number in yeah, go right ahead. Do what you gotta do. Looks like you got a couple of messages. Well, I don't here. I don't know how to do that. You, I, I'm gonna use that Apple phone. So just I you think, just want to put the number in, right? Uh, well, or yeah, or check contacts or however you do it to make to see who it is. Yeah. One nine two thirteen ninety. Just call it. Oh, Steve. So what they're doing now is trying to figure out who the hell called him on Friday around midnight. You know, Friday going over to Saturday, which would have actually been on the drive home from his uh, mother's house from the family farm, right, to his home. Somebody called him around midnight, and that person was Stephen Lawson. So now Brooks Hawk is going to be like, oh, yeah, okay, Stephen, yeah, okay, Stephen Lawson, and he's going to explain that, and... He just so happens to have a son called Joseph Lawson, which could very plausibly be the guy who was arrested, who's also called Joseph Lawson, and who's been charged with a conspiracy to commit murder and tampering with evidence. Lawson? Okay. Who's, who is Steve Lawson? He's uh, somebody that works for me. Hey, Steve. Hey, I can't I can't hear you real good. I'm uh, I'm gonna ask you to speak up a little bit, okay? Okay, sir. Hey, I was wanting to know, hey, I've got some things going on next week. Uh, I'm gonna yes, need, I'm gonna need your help with me. Are you, are you already booked up or can you help me? I haven't moved up yet. I'm still looking for a place, that's why I needed them numbers from you. Alright, well I can I can write them all down and, and get them there for you, but I was I was actually talking about doing some doing some more work with your with your little skid steer and so forth. Mine's still oh, broke down. Well, well I said uh get with me tomorrow, I'm coming, I know you have a hard time hearing me because it's where I'm located at. Alright. So uh just get in touch with me tomorrow and we'll see what we can do. But I, my question uh, I just want to tell you, I'm sorry about everything that's going on in your life, brother, and I got you in my prayers. I certainly, I said it is a very difficult and trying time, but I appreciate you uh, you saying that. But hey, I need your help while I got you on the phone here. Do you remember, the other night you called me really, really late, and I, I forgot I forgot what you asked me. Can you, uh, I, well, I guess we wasn't on the phone, I might have been tired, I know it was pretty late at night. Can you remember what you asked me or what you uh, were after? I can't remember. Ooh, you got to listen to this now because it gets very interesting. <laughs> because I think this little bit of small talk before of like, hey, what's up? You're busy. You're booked up this week. You got some time or what? You know, this little thing they're doing is probably what they agreed to do. I'm just speculating. But they possibly like, if I call you from the police again, I start talking about 
There, there's probably a, there was probably a code word in there, right? Then you know. Careful what you say now. But it still gets botched <laughs> because it's like, oh yeah, it's gonna. You'll you hear it now. Listen to this. And Detective Snow catches it. Sir, I can't. I called to ask you for them numbers for a house. Oh, for a rental house. Yes, sir. And, did. and what did I? I forgot. What did I? What did I tell you? You told me that you would call. Uh, what's her name? Katie or whatever. She handles handles all that. Crystal. Crystal. Okay, I apologize. Yeah. All right, thank you so much now. Okay, so in the time frame where Brooks was, according to his story, with Crystal and Eli, and they're driving home from being on the farm in the rain, feeding the cows, and at the burn pile, hopefully roasting marshmallows is how he's making it sound right for date night or whatever. Okay, so now they're driving home. Along the way, Stephen Lawson phones him for 13 seconds. <laughs> And he's now claiming, Stephen is saying, oh yeah, you, you told me that Crystal handles everything with rentals and, and I should call her. Now, why would he need to call her if Crystal's sitting right next to him? <laughs> hey, if there's anything I can do, you give me a call. Thank you. You have a good night now. Yes, sir. God bless you. Thank you. Look at that physiology. He's just like, mm hmm. Yeah. Do you see that? You got that, did you? <laughs> well, look at this question now. Okay. So that begs a question in my mind. All right. If she's in the truck next to you when he called, why would you need to call her about getting numbers for rental? Because being that way that night we're headed to the house, you know, I just wouldn't. Uh, she normally is not going to deal with stuff that late. I mean, I don't. Even, I, I probably didn't even look at the phone to see who it was calling. I'm sure I just answered it. You know. But he said you told him that you'd need to call her. All right. Why would you need to call her? I mean, that's an odd phrase for someone who's sitting next to you in the truck. Pretty odd phrase, and also 13 seconds to say all that, huh? 13 seconds. To say what? Hey, I'm calling about a rental. Yeah, you need to call Crystal. Okay, bye. <laughs> How does that conversation go? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I see exactly what you're saying. I mean, that's what I, if that right there is what I told him, that right there is what I told him. Um, we wasn't on the phone that uh, that long. But normally I would just, uh, she handles all that, and that's what I would do. She's not going to want to mess with that kind of stuff that late. Uh, I'm sure I'll probably try to answer the phone really quickly um, so that it wouldn't, uh, a lot of times after I get moving, Eli goes to sleep, you know. Um, sometimes he goes to sleep in the truck. Mm-mm, mm-mm, you said he's wild. You earlier said your son was wild, and he stays up late, and when they got home, when you all got home, Crystal and Eli were still awake. Yes. So now it's like, mm -mm, no, no, I just answered it really quickly and it was, you know, I don't know, I just I wouldn't bother her. He's scrambling now. <laughs> Sometimes he doesn't. So if you want to call him, and you got his number and everything. If you want to call him, you know, you can call him. Look how uncomfortable he is now. Ooh, he's so uncomfortable. What do you think happened? I don't, I'm shocked. I do not know. Shocked? When you told me that she doesn't do drugs. She's not on any kind of drugs that I'm aware of. She drinks socially. On and mildly, yes, not any kind Every of... Every six, eight weeks, something like that, right? Has she ever had trouble with depression before? Not really, uh, not to my knowledge. I mean, there's always stress that's your highs and lows in people's life, but I wouldn't classify her as a, um, um, as a, as a stressful person or someone that's deeply depressed. Mm -hmm. 
stressful person. I don't think that's what that wasn't the question. <laughs> what a weird thing to say. Well, yeah, still guitar says so Snow is just playing him and so well, right? It's so good. If you've seen lots of um, interviews or interrogations, it's so good. Like, it's just like, hmm, interesting. And he's just like, <laughs> Brooks is like, you, you, you can call him if you want. Uh huh. It's like, what do you think happened? <laughs> sure. Well, I know Keith Rogers, her ex husband, or still current, but not together. Um, I know that he has had a drug problem in the past. Was she, a, was she with him during the time that he had the drug problem? Or was that after yeah, but I'm not, you guys got uh, I mean, was she I involved think, in that? I think time? that he has fought that for some time, and I think that she was obviously definitely in the picture while that was going on but I don't I don't to my knowledge she didn't get wrapped up into any of that I guess the, the biggest problem that I have is that most women are not going to walk away from their purse and their cell phone in the car. I agree with you. You know what I'm saying? Uh, if she were going to walk to go find help or something, she would use, She would take her phone even if it was dead. Uh, she wouldn't, most, my, my wife wouldn't leave her purse anywhere for any reason. Uh, so I can't figure why she would walk away from the car and leave the purse there. When we took the bloodhounds up there, the lady commented that it was though she wasn't even there. I mean, they had her things that you provided us for sin, mm -hmm. and they said it was as though she was not even there. I don't, I can't explain that. I don't understand what yeah, that yeah, means. Explain I don't know that. why, if it's her. It's a really great question, the way that he's asking it, because at that point, it was, they believed, like, this car was planted here. So let's see how he answers that, right? Her car, and she leaves in it sometime Friday night. Why does it appear to the dogs that she's not even there? I agree with you. This same set of bloodhounds tracked you all, tracked her in the car from 49, and they had never been to your mom's farm before, tracked you all, her scent, all the way down 49, turned on Balltown Road, and turned on Pascal Ballard as though they were following your car. So I know the dog's not defective, that's yeah, right. They're following your her scent. I love that. I know the dog's not defective. The bloodhounds literally tracked her scent to the farm. Not to where her car was and not in her car or anything like that. Hmm. And they don't know where your mom lives. They've never That's been right. before. So the dog's nose is not defective. So when the dog doesn't even try to find her on the parkway where her car look, ends up, it's just very odd to me. And I can't figure out why they wouldn't find any scent of her at all if she walked one way or another. They would have picked it up. Right. They would have they would have at least walked far enough for her to have been picked up by somebody. Uh, you know, you know how if you break down on the parkway, somebody's not going to pull bumper to bumper with you. So you're going to have to walk from your car to their car to get here. Right. So the dog doesn't even act like it wants to go in one direction or another, even far enough for her to have even gotten in a car with somebody. That's just weird to me. I don't understand. Unless she was never in her car when it got put on the parkway. I don't know. Yeah, but I, mean, I can't I can't answer that. I do not know. Do you know of anybody that would want to hurt her? I mean, as far as I know, she's a well likable person. Right. Um I know that she's done a few evictions with some folks, got a few people upset, but were they missing evictions? I mean like threat. I mean, there's never a good eviction. Right, but I mean, it's just normal, normal, normal business. Okay, now he's going to blame it on evictions. Right, right, right. But I can't think of anything. She's a likable person. I can't think of anybody who would want to harm her. Ever have right. anybody show up at the house upset over something? Uh, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? You come in there yeah. when, you're, when it's not appropriate for them to be coming to their landlord's house. Ever have them show up at your house, beating on the door, or hey, you threw me out, or whatever? I've never had somebody come up there to the house over an eviction saying you threw me out. Not one time. Uh, now, several of the tenants do come to our house, 
some people don't just mail a money order check. Sometimes people stop by there and drop it off. Sure. And, you know, she can write them a receipt that way or whatever. But as far as what you're saying about you evicted me and you threw me out and they're confronting her about it, never happened one time. Does Kylie's dad, excuse me, Kylie's dad, she does, he doesn't have anything to do with her? Very little. I don't even know. I think he lives a far piece from here. I'm not really sure. So he, that. somebody, I thought they said their dad's name was John Fenwick. Is that correct? Or no, not? that's not right. That's not right. Okay. I think it's Jesse. John Fenwick is one of the owners of Bluegrass Seed. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. not her. Okay. That's not so her. So Jesse thing. Fenwick. I believe. And that might not even Somebody that doesn't live around here close. Yeah. It's a far picture. Is it now? But obviously, uh, his mom does lives on Stone Road. Yes. So he's a member of that Fenwick family that's from around here. I don't know how many sets of Fenwicks there are, but I know there's. there's as far as I know, there's only two. Now right. I don't know which one he would belong to, and right. there may be more than that that I'm unaware of. But, right. um, so, is, do you know is she related to the Fenwicks that own the Bluegrass Sea? I, I do not. Know. I don't think she is, but I do not no, know. No, sure. I don't ask family trees and all. I don't do all right. that. Um, I didn't. Well, I didn't know since you you know do business. Uh, if you've done business with them, if it come up, but um, and then Ashley is the daughter that her mom and dad raised. Yes, and her last I figured out her last name is Johnson. I couldn't tell you that the other night because I was so darn stressed out, but. Her last name is Johnson, and I do not know her dad's first name. I just know that he, he stays incarcerated quite a bit. He doesn't do family He'll get trees, out from okay. time to time, but he will only make it about a week and may find a reason to lock him back up again, whether it be drugs or whatever it uh, is. Have you all ever had any trouble out of him? I've never met the man. Um, I know that that was a pretty abusive relationship from what Crystal's told me, but... Um, I don't really know. I can't speak intelligently upon that's been quite some time back. So I really don't, I don't know a whole lot about it. I don't even know the guy's first name. No custody custody issues with Keith. I know that um, I know that Tori uh, has told her before that um, she gets mad if uh, Tori gets mad if she's been corrected or something like that. Right there, she'll say, "Well, I'm going to my dad's house, or I'm going over here." You know, they'll want to flip flop back or forth or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, split house. Play down. one off the other. Yeah, I know Tori does that, but I mean, I don't think they've ever really had any big issue on getting the kids from what I can understand that's been pretty good I mean if one of them wants them or to, uh, Keith wants them for a little bit or that kids want to go over there they just had kind of like a, a mutual agreement where that's what they did that's just what they did they never really yeah. struggled with it you know yeah well okay so I guess where I go from here um, we we're and now at some point, his brother's going to call him and tell him to get the hell out of there, which is one of the main reasons that he was actually fired from his job as a police officer. The brother, Nick Houck, right? He calls him. He's like, no, no, you got to leave now. I mean, that and many other factors. He wasn't the greatest on the job. He was apparently sleeping on the job, didn't report a teen missing. It's a bunch of other stuff. And just his conduct and just the way the police chief was like... <laughs> You're supposed to be protecting the victim or trying to help find the missing person? Like, what are you doing telling your brother to get out of this interview? You're supposed to be doing everything to help the investigation, right? Okay. And also, now we know that Brooks and Nick and the family, even the sister, they were secretly recording grand jury proceedings. So I don't know if there's going to be charges for that. Someone earlier said that that would be a felony charge. So we'll see if family members at a later stage also get those charges. Who knows? Uh, no one would be surprised if his brother is also arrested at some point, especially now with the new information that the, prosecu uh, the prosecutor says that they believe they now have the gun that killed Tommy Ballard, which is Crystal's dad, right? 
Okay, so we've still got a few minutes to go here. We're, we're still getting video from different places, you know, that along, along that route. Uh, can I get this? Sure, please. Here we go. Can you come out? No. I, I, I'm, up, I'm up here, and I know that you didn't know, I'm up here in this interview with um, the detective. Detective. Just watch how absolutely staged this is, okay? It's no. I've been up here a good little while. I'm, I'm filling out this uh, this statement here and everything. Do, is it? Do, are you telling me that's? Are you telling me that's what I need to do? I know, I, I know, I don't, I know, I, I'm not, I know that, but the way that I look at it is I, I'm innocent, I ain't done nothing wrong, what, you know, I know you told me innocent people got jammed up, but if you're telling me to leave, I'll get up and leave, if you want me, if you want me to, I know I'm going through a lot, but I'm trying to get this guy to help me. I don't think she's ran off with some other guy. I don't, I don't believe that. You can't make me think that. No. You can't make me think that. No one can make me think that. I don't think she ran off with someone else. <laughs> I mean, this is like watching Days of Our Lives or something, right? Oh my. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, I mean, so, I mean, so, so do I. I'll do exactly what you're telling me to do right now. You want me to get up and leave? Man, I don't think these guys, I don't think, I don't think these people have got vindictive just to, to skin me for no reason. Man, this is not their family. This is not. Alright, thank you. He thinks y'all are little fuck is what he thinks. I don't know who he is. Nick, my brother. Mm -hmm. he you just, don't know him? No, I, I know that, but I, I'm not. He just said just to just to keep sitting up here to give a, give a statement, do an interview, whatever I got to do, do it. But he said, no, I'm just to keep just letting them just beat you to death over this right here. Just ask what you. Another poor choice of words. Oh my word. Okay, so yeah, he's. Police officer brother called and said, "Get the hell out of there! Like you, you should, you shouldn't be there." And ugh, just great, <laughs> great police work there to his brother. Got to ask and let me you know. I, and you tell me. You see what I'm? You see what I mean? He knows more about this than I do. You see? And, and have I listen? Have I told you that I'm for you? Yes, you have. I said, what did I say? My job is to find Crystal. Right? That's right. However that happens, my job is to find her, whether I right. find her hopefully alive and well and safe somewhere or not. My job is to find her. If I don't find her alive and well, my job is to prosecute the person that did something. That's good. right. If yes. that turns out to be you, my job is to prosecute you. If that turns out to be someone else, my job is to prosecute them, to gather yes. evidence for a lawyer, a prosecutor to prosecute them. I don't know whether that person will be you or not. Well, did I not tell you when you come in here and sit down today that right now you're the main person of interest? Yes, that's right. And I explained to you the reason that you're the main person of interest, right? Mm -hmm. You're the last person to see your life, right? There's. So in this interview already, they're saying you're the main person of, in of interest. Person of interest, yes, P-O-I. You're the last person to see her alive. Explaining all of that, but he was officially named a suspect in October of 2015 and he was only arrested at the end of September of 2023 oh my word and I went through your timeline with you and explained to you that there's gaps in your timeline right be it good bad or indifferent you can't remember some things about Saturday you can't remember some things about Sunday that's not a judgment against you that's just a fact I am simply a fact finder if you want to go you may go at any time you wish to I never would never dream of stopping you, didn't tell you you had to stay. 
If you want to bring a lawyer in and answer questions with a lawyer, you're welcome to do that. I'd have been asking you the very same questions in front of your lawyer that I asked you today. Right? I have not given up hope of finding her alive. That being said, you know as well as I do, the longer this draws out, the less likely we are to find her alive unless she's run off somewhere. I mean, that's just a fact. That's right. That's just the facts as they are. I am not for you. I am not against you. I am not for her family or against her family. Right now, my job is to work for Crystal. Plain and simple. It's just that simple. If that means that I have to interrogate you, then that's what I have to do. You've been nothing but cooperative with me. I appreciate that. We've talked. This makes number three? Third time? I don't know. I can't. Well, three keep... times. Here, the first time. At your house, the second time. And here, the third time again. Not counting the polygraph, because I didn't ask any questions mm -hmm. in. You've not asked for a lawyer. You're right. That's your right to do. You're entitled to do that. If Nick thinks you should go and you want to take his advice, go ahead. It's fine. I'm not offended by that. My job is not to make you happy. My job is to find Crystal. If that makes you happy, awesome. You know, um, but make, make no mistake, my job is to find her. That's what I'm doing. If I offend people in the midst of that, well, I'll apologize later for offending people. If it finds her home safe, then I'll just take the blunt of offending people and go on. You know, just like what you said. What'd you say? Doesn't matter what they think of you as long as we find her. That's all right. Mm -hmm. So that being said, you know, you're free to take Nick's advice if he wants you to leave. I I don't really have any more questions with you. I was just going to tell you what we going where we go next. All right. Yeah. We're wrapping up and you tell me what we're doing next. And if it's over, it's maybe the yeah. So yeah. So uh, you know, here's what I'm looking at. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to find video of her car getting on the parkway, whether it's. Uh, New Haven Road or uh, 150, trying to find some video of her car getting on the parkway in hopes that it will reveal to us when it gets on the parkway because there's some confusion about that. Some people calling in saying they saw it on Saturday. Some people calling in saying they saw it on Sunday morning. Yeah, yes, okay. And he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> but he's definitely, you can see now he's all, oh, look, he's all small now. He's like, okay, yep, I'm going to listen to my brother and I'm going to go. Like, my word. Some people calling in saying it wasn't there Saturday or Sunday morning. That's just the nature of the beast. When you put information out there, you get a lot of it back. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to figure out when it got on the parkway, and if I can, who was driving it when it got on the parkway. Maybe she was driving it, maybe she wasn't. Maybe somebody else was driving it. I don't know. You know, maybe somebody stole it and it got a flat tire, and they left it on the parkway. I have no idea. There's a million possibilities about how it got on there. So I'm trying to figure that out. He's like, you try to figure that out, okay. If you want to go, you can go. Just figure that out. We're trying to get all this information. Uh, Tea Tree says, what? I didn't know the trunks had proof. Then you got to rewatch episode one. <laughs> but also tomorrow, we'll be looking at Nick Hauk's interview. And there, they say to him, it's actually, I don't know if it's in the interview. Could be in that one. And there's the polygraph test one. Um, they say, but your trunk, like, lit up with luminol. Like, how is that? He's like, I don't know. I don't know why can't explain that <laughs> why would there be uh, blood or bodily fluid there so yes I would like to fill in the gaps in your timeline I may be able to do that with the video at your aunt and uncle's house because they may be able to show me when you came and went from the farm on Saturday those kind of things I'm probably going to interview your mom I'm probably going to interview Nick and ask them you know if they were with you anytime during that time Maybe they have a little better memory of it. They can fill in those gaps. I'm probably going to interview the employees that called you Friday and Saturday, or Friday evening and then Saturday, to interview them and ask them, you know, when you called him, what did you talk about? How long did you talk? Uh, Mr. Uh, Stanley or whatever his name mm -hmm. is, you know, did he answer the phone? Did you all talk on Saturday morning? If you did, what did you talk about? Did you go see him? Those kinds of things to help me fill in your timeline which gives me a better idea of whether or not you're involved in her disappearance. And it's, that's good. what I do. So, and then once I've done as much as I feel like I can do, I'm going to move on to other things. I'll be honest. Beyond that, short of finding her somewhere, I've done about all the forensic countermeasures I can do. You know, we've, we've gone through the car with a fine-tooth comb. we fingerprinted the car. We've gone through her purse. We're going to start going through bank records. 
you know, she did have an account. I know you told me you didn't know that she did or didn't. She did have an account of some sort. Um, my understanding is maybe from a family member that there was some uh, uh, social security disability from Keith for the kids that maybe went into that account. Maybe that's the case. We'll kind of look into that. You know, we'll start questioning people about the validity of those kinds of things, about the apartment and those kind of things, and try to get a better idea if that's just a shady rumor or whatever. You know, but I've got to. Unfortunately, I've got to dispel all of these rumors. You know, that's part of my job. Yes, we're almost done here, you guys. So, <laughs> Cook Thirteen Doodle said that interview was snap back so fast <laughs> by Detective Snow. Right? I like that emoji at the end. They always. Yes. Mm -hmm. We've got to either prove them, disprove them, or no, we can't do either. So that's where I'm at. All right. So uh, I appreciate you coming in. If if I ask you to come in again or if I come see you, again, know that you're always welcome to tell me you don't want to talk to me anymore. That's perfectly okay. All right? All right. Um, Are you familiar with my phone? Yes, sir. And he's done. And off he goes. So that is the entirety of this interview with Brooks Hauk from July 8th of 2015. Now, I think what I've got here for the last four minutes of this clip is probably, I think, what I put in here is that Nancy Grace um, interview with Brooks Hauk, where you'll hear him slip up a little bit more. Allegedly. <laughs> Check it out. Oh, um, I've been told it was an accident. Wait, so we still got some of this, okay. This is um, Sherry Ballard talking about her husband's death now. And we did hear it before, and I covered in episode one on this case, right? It's all on the playlist for you, link below, where the police actually said to Sherry and Tommy, there's some very dangerous people. You might want to move out of town. And Tommy was saying that people were following him. So... Listen to this. Accidental, and I know the moment I got the phone call that it wasn't accidental. The police told us we're dealing with some very dangerous people to be careful, and my husband was being followed. Um, he told me that before, and but we had to do what we had to do to find my daughter. And that morning, he was just hunting on our farm with my grandson. My grandson was standing right beside him when it happened. Oh my goodness. That was, that was just a technical thing. Sorry, it was an ill-timed technical thing. A light, a light pop. I'm sorry. That was, that was like the worst time technical problem ever, right? Shame. Kind of scary. Um, so, I mean, can, what do you believe happened here? What do you believe happened? I believe someone wanted my husband out of the way. I think my husband was getting close. They knew my husband would never give up looking for my daughter. And... I think he was a threat to them. And so you they, think it was the same person who, who you believe took your daughter's life? In my opinion, I honestly do. Retired circuit. No, I might not even have that clip in yet. We shall see. This is a retired circuit court uh, judge now reacting to Brooks Hauk's arrest. Archer Girl as well. There's two others, but it's all of Nick Hauk. So we're going to look at that tomorrow. Okay, that would be Nick Hauk's interview with police and then also his uh, lie detector test. Court Judge Jack C. has lived in Nelson County his entire life. He was still on the bench when Crystal Rogers went missing. We wondered whether it would ever come through at all. C. says the new charges could stem from a few different things. I think something they may have found, and also there's a lot of speculation about whether the other defendant may have flipped, or maybe somebody else has flipped and has some uh, direct knowledge of the case. Very likely. That, that's a possibility as well. That is a possibility as well, and it would strengthen the case significantly. C was on the bench when Hauk was charged with theft back in 2018. That trial was moved to Warren County, where Hauk was found not guilty. He'll almost certainly not be tried in Nelson County this time either. Given the case's notoriety, it may be hard mm -hmm. to find a place in Kentucky, but not impossible. The standard is not whether a person hasn't heard anything about the case but whether they can uh, set aside what they've heard and make a decision based on the evidence and the uh, instructions as to the law that the judge gives them. C, still remaining impartial years after leaving the bench, says this is a big step in the case, but it is far from over. I've seen and heard a lot of people who are relieved that there's finally something definite going on that's headed for the court system. 
uh, but I would just urge everybody to to, to be patient because this could take a while and we don't know what the result will be. She says one of the variables in this case that can make things interesting is the lack of a body. It could also be one of the reasons that prosecutors decided not to press charges until now. He says while it may be hard, much like finding a case in Kentucky where this can be tried, it's not impossible to get a conviction without a body. And right now our coverage is moving ahead with Oh, yeah. I said I would still show you this again. And then we'll look at that little clip uh, from HLN. Okay, right after this. So this, let's look at it one more time. Where Brooks Hauck, finally, eight years later, is arrested. Okay, still innocent to proven guilty. Suspect charged, though, with Crystal's murder and with tampering with evidence. And there's another guy that was also arrested, Joseph Lawson. So here we'll see him entering the jail and then coming out in his orange jail outfit with his shackled ankles. Our top story on the WHS 1119, the arrest today of Brooks Houck, the longtime chief suspect in the killing and disappearance of Crystal Rogers, his former girlfriend. It's the major breakthrough in the case that has taken eight long years to happen for Bardstown and the Ballard family. And if there's one number that tells the story tonight, it's his whopper of a bond, $10 million cash. And first here tonight, though, here show us, show us. Here's the video that is captivating Bardstown. He was the last person to see Crystal alive, now being led to jail by police. No there longer is. free, heading to jail. It's 1048 a.m. 41 year old Brooks Houck emerging from a sheriff's SUV <laughs> wearing a T-shirt and shorts. Quickly. He had been arrested on the job at a construction site. Handcuffed, he walks quickly into the Nelson County Jail. Yep. Then. Less than one hour later, at 11.39 a.m., the scene all of Bardstown has waited. Yes, the scene all of Bardstown has waited for for eight years. Oh, my word. Sure. Look at him go. Look at him go in his orange jail outfit. You know, Team Crystal. Yes, they, they mostly wore orange shirts. Prayers for Crystal, Team Crystal. Orange, pink, and yellow, but a lot of orange. So... <laughs> He's in orange now. That's right. Oh, this guy, my word, look at him go. Eight years to see. Hauk wearing an orange jumpsuit. As you can see here as well, he's wearing leg chains. Led to his transportation right to the Hardin County Jail. Mm-hmm. Okay, I want to show you one more thing, so just give me a second. Um, that was I thought I put it as part of my clips, but clearly not. So I'm going to get it over here for you. The next right here we watched it together in the members only uh, live stream we went over a whole bunch of cases yesterday okay uh, so if you were there in the members only stream then you would have remembered this so i'm gonna snark a little less <laughs> this time around let's just play it and hear what brooks Hauk said in this interview which i think when was this one this one's in i think it was 2018. i'm not too sure i think so though let's have a look Joining me right now, in addition to her parents, uh, Tom and Sherry Ballard, her boyfriend that she lived with, they're in their three-bedroom suburban home. Brooks Hauk is with us. Thank so, you. So, Brooks, you go to bed, and she's still playing games on her phone. The next morning, around 8 o'clock, you notice that she's missing. Did you report her missing? No, ma'am. Why? That is a great Now, listen how he answers. Did you report a missing? No, ma'am. Why? Here we go. Listen to what he says. That is a great question and one that I definitely uh, want to hit the, uh, the public and the media. Um, I was not in the least little bit alarmed in any way, shape, or form. Um, we have had a stress relationship at times, and uh, one of the ways that Crystal has always chose to the culprit to deal with that is by going to uh, a young woman's name, Sabrina, that is her cousin, her dad's brother's daughter, whom she's very close to. Um, and she spent the night there on several occasions. When you say several, do you mean one? And we heard today. If you were here today for the whole live stream, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here the whole time. If not, don't worry. If you only join now, you can always check out the replay. I'm going to do timestamps for you and everything, right? But we heard Crystal's mom say she didn't go there often. She didn't go, like, 
to Sabrina's house. They actually said never. But, uh, you know, even if it is once or twice that she went there a bit or something, Brooks is making like, no, no, no. Crystal, you know, it was a very stressed relationship and she went there to, you know, cool off and all of that. Liar. And 3.20? In the neighborhood of 4 to 6. Okay, like is, that. To, Tom and Sherry Ballard, were you aware of that? Do you know who Sabrina is? Yes, that's, ma'am. That's my yeah. niece. Shame. Okay. There's, there's Tommy. Did you know that she goes and spends the night over there when she's having an issue at home? I've known probably one time. Mm. Right. Okay, I want to go back to Brooks Hauk, um, who was the last person. Ooh, this must have been so difficult, right? Because they're on the interview at the same time to hear... I mean, everything's been difficult for eight years. And then Tommy Ballard was shot as well. He was murdered. And his case is still unsolved. Although it sounds like they're getting closer to justice for Tommy Ballard too. Now with uh, the two arrests that they made. To see her alive. Brooks, did you go on to the July the 4th get together that day? Yes, I did. Even though you didn't know where she was? I was expecting, I'd put me in a phone call um, that morning and then around lunch. And usually uh, the maximum period of time that she has stayed gone has only been like a day to a day and a half at the most. And as a result of that, I thought that she would Did you try uh, to call her? Us. See, in this interview with Nancy Grace, he says, yes, he did. He went to those 4th of July celebrations. Oh, where? At your mom's house. And you stayed there for the night, right? Okay, because you didn't say that in your own interview before, in 2015. Okay. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, ma'am. Did you try to call her during that time? Uh, not while I was there, um, there at, the, um, at, at the 4th. And I called her <laughs> at the fourth. So he doesn't want to say where he was. He's like, oh, what? not while I was there at the fourth. No, where were you on the fourth? And he did mention Sabrina before in that um, interview that we just watched of him with the police. He did say that before. But yeah, why? Why? Oh, this guy. You know, there's just so many whys actually with him. I can't even say them all. Prior to leaving to head in that direction. Yes, ma'am. Uh, some people have accused you of not being involved enough in the search efforts. Listen to what he What's says your here. response? That is a great question, and one I certainly appreciate you asking me. And that is uh, all of my efforts in searching for her have been done behind the scenes um, with the Nelson. Oh, behind the scenes. The community was so pissed off by these statements that they actually printed it out on like these yellow signs and said, they quoted him like, all my searches have been done behind the scenes with the NCSO. Okay, the Nelson County Sheriff's Office. <laughs> so if you've never seen the Oxygen series on the disappearance of Crystal Rogers, check it out. It's very interesting as well. Okay. County Sheriff's Office. Like what? Detective, <laughs> like what? Uh, Detective Snow, who's leading the investigation, and Jason. Literally, Detective Snow, you're going to mention him by name, huh? even though he, he can smell your BS from right there a few days later. He's like, no, I've been working with, oh, you've been searching with, you know, Detective Snow, and now he's just going to name people in offices and admin assistants. Allison is a deputy there assisting him, along with the Kentucky State Police. Uh, agency post number 12. So well, my, my, my question was because... what you had been doing with them, but let me ask you this. I know that you agreed to take a polygraph. Did you pass? <laughs> they, because of the way that the lines or whatever were on the thing, they determined it to be what's called inconclusive. I'm not exactly sure what that means. You lied. Uh, but they did tell me it didn't. It does mean that I wasn't lying or I didn't pass it or I didn't fail it. They just ruled it inconclusive, and that's exactly the way that it stands. I've been 100% completely honest. Um, with 100% completely honest. <laughs> Look at Nancy's face. She's like, mm hmm. With everyone, I've been 100% cooperative, and everything that has been asked of me, I've not asked for any kind of legal advice or assistance or an attorney of any nature. I'm 100% completely innocent in this. 
and I have exhausted my efforts with the law enforcement agencies uh, to gather all the facts necessary um, to allow me to have a clean name again. Um, and that's very important. Mm, it's very important to him to have a clean name again because his image is what matters right now, right? That's what's most important. Important um, to me. I have not responded to a lot of the negativity and all this animosity because I want the emphasis to remain on Crystal's safe return home, and that's where I want it to. Uh, I want it to stay focused in that area rather than dealing with any of the animosity. Okay, and so that's what we have for today. Now, where else have we heard that? <laughs> it sounds familiar, doesn't it? Remember when Letitia Stark, who I was hoping I'd never have to say her name again, but remember when Letitia Stark had her back to the cameras there with uh, Spencer? When she was talking to poor Spencer, and she was like, look, I don't want any of this negativity. People just need to focus on bringing Gannon home. It sounds just like that. That's why he's like, look, look, I don't want this animosity. I just want to clear up my name, you know, <laughs> my name, my family's name. Just want to, that's just got to be good again. It's very important to me. And also, just just focus on what's important here. Yeah, right. Oh, man. Okay. So, that is what we have for today. We've been here for <laughs> three hours and 40 minutes. It was quite a long live stream. That means I've got a lot of timestamps to do. Wish me luck. <laughs> Timestamps take a while, but I'm going to work hard at it. Uh, probably now. It's almost midnight my time here. I'm going to be doing that as soon as the live stream is done so that anyone watching the replay can just easily navigate through this entire stream. And then I have not set up the stream yet for tomorrow, but tomorrow we'll meet again and we'll look at the interviews that Nick Houck, Brooks's brother, has done. People speculate he may be arrested as well, but we don't know that at all. He hasn't, no one's named him as a suspect or anything. All that we know is that he used a fake name to sell a gun to an undercover agent of sorts, is what I'm hearing. It's an undercover agent, and that gun, so far, is meeting four out of five of the criteria to say that it's the same gun that killed Tommy Ballard. So it's getting very interesting. Two arrests have already been made. Will there be a third? Will there be more charges brought against the family, the Haug family, for secretly recording the grand jury uh, proceedings? We don't know. Tomorrow I'll set up the stream. I've just got to put all that together for you guys, so that takes some time. So it should be around the same time we started today. Maybe a bit earlier, because it might be slightly longer if we look at both the interview and the polygraph. Maybe we'll split that up. We shall see, okay? But uh, if you haven't yet checked out the playlist, please do that so that you, you are giving you some homework. <laughs> We always get, um, not always, but sometimes you get grizzly uh, true crime homework here. <laughs> and so make sure you've looked at episode one, that you're sure of the timeline and the overview and everything. Yesterday, we also went over who is Joseph Lawson, what's his background, who's this guy that was arrested, how could he be connected? And we went over Brooks Hauk, a bit of a, a, a quite a, quite a deepish dive, but today we really went in to look at this interview. Um... Pinche, Becky, zero Fs given. I always like reading out your whole name. Thank you, G, justice for Crystal. Yes, thinking of Crystal's of family and friends and Tommy's and Jason Ellis and the mom and daughter uh, that referred to as the Netherlands um, that were also murdered. There's a, a lot of unsolved cases in Bardstown, Kentucky. Could they all be connected? Maybe. Now I'm losing my voice. So I'm going to go. <laughs> Thank you so much, Liz. I really appreciate it. I'll see you guys all tomorrow okay and if you joined membership today check out the members only playlist because it's there for you yesterday's live stream you might want to check that out and uh, if you haven't yet please make your way over to patreon it's one dollar to join and there's so many perks there for you including all the members live streams the replays and things go over there but then also behind the scenes videos and all kinds of stuff there for you okay so um, if you're into that i will see you guys tomorrow thank you so much mods for everything you do and um Stay safe in the meantime, okay? Have a good evening or whatever time it is for you. Let's make sure the outro doesn't double play. Okay, bye everyone. A voice said, don't go.